Hey everyone and welcome to another Crimson Scales video, this time on the Valrath Fire Knight. If you're new to the series and you don't know what Crimson Scales is, it is a fan-made expansion to Gloomhaven that uh, was made with the community to a very high quality. Lots of new characters, a whole campaign to play through, items, some new rules, loads of stuff in there, all curated by the community. It's really just sort of like a fan-made kind of love letter to Gloomhaven, if you like. And it is not a, an official product, so it's not canon, and it was made as a not-for-profit. There were physical versions available for this, but unfortunately, they have now closed. I mean, who knows? They might open up again, but there is a print and play version if you'd like to pick that up and print it yourself. There is also a tabletop simulator mod for this as well. So if you'd like to play a computer sort of digital version of this, head over to thecrimsonscales.com if you'd like to check it out for yourself. And I can highly recommend it. And Isaac, the designer of Gloomhaven, also recommended it and uh, was very impressed with the level of detail and kind of dedication that the community has had to this kind of content for Gloomhaven, kind of keeping it alive. So yeah, really, really good to see and go check it out. I can highly recommend. A big thank you to all of my supporters over on Patreon and the subs over on Twitch for the support. It's very kind of you. And a big thank you to Mike, Kira, and Truck Driving Gamer for the legendary support. Thank you, guys. You are both awesome. I really appreciate it. If you would like to come and hang out live, then come over to twitch.tv slash quest every Monday, Wednesday, and Sunday, where I'm usually either streaming Gloomhaven, talking about Gloomhaven, or doing other things. But yeah, always having a good time. So come hang out. And if you've got any questions, I'm always happy to talk about them and answer them live. Okay, that's enough of an intro. Let's get in to the Fire Knight. The Fire Knights are an elite sect of the Valorath clan commissioned to project, protect their community from danger and render care of the injured. Driven from their homes after the Demon War, the Fire Knights reluctantly consulted a pyromancer, learning to control the vicious flames that had just ravaged their homeland. With this knowledge passed down, the Fire Knights easily integrated into human society as part of the Human's Fire Protection Agencies. These courageous defenders take pride in helping others, but do not mistake their compassion for weakness. The same skills that make a Fire Knight an effective protector are the ones that make it a force to be reckoned with on the battlefield. <clears throat> awesome. Small side question, MQ. I'm thinking about playing on TTS. Is this still on or have I reconsidered? I want to play on... I want to play physical Crimson Scales. The, my physical Crimson Scales playthrough is like a... It's like a, a first run at what Frosthaven will be. So, you know, I want to be playing Frosthaven as well on stream. So I'm going to use Crimson Scales to get all my framing and everything right. So that we can really get the setup to be really high quality and hopefully really enjoyable for you guys to watch. And... Um, then once we'll, we'll be playing Crimson Scales, then once Frosthaven comes out, I could just roll straight into that with like a proven setup, which is what I really want to do. So Crimson Scales is very much going to be like a, you know, a, a way of tuning it and making sure that we can get things right. So I definitely want to play it physical, not on TTS, because that won't, that won't help me <laughs> with the future projects. So I really want to do that. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry. I had a bit of a cough today. Okay. So... I make kind of makes sense, I think. I I, I do feel like uh, well, well we'll we'll go over to the player player map now as well. Um, you know, pretty pretty heroic looking uh looking guy or gal. Um, I like I don't know about this image. I don't know if it's just me. But there's just like something a bit off about this picture and I can't really put my finger on it. It's almost as if like the head doesn't look like it belongs to this body. I don't know why, but it just looks a bit like the proportions of this look a bit off to me. I don't know, like the... It just doesn't look quite right. I mean, I love the fire and everything. I mean, it's a pretty, pretty cool pose, but just seems a little bit off to me in some way. And I can't really put my finger on it. Um, but essentially, we're a firefighter. That's what we are. Um, you know, thematically, the designer, right, was is a firefighter. And kind of wanted to, like, bring elements of that across. Um, which is a pretty, pretty unique idea. Like, none of the other characters that I know of have been based off of, like, you know, personal experience or anything like that. So it's pretty unique from that perspective. Um, you know, no one else can really... None of the other characters, you can draw a line and be like, ah, yes, yeah, I'm a... 
I'm a spirit caller in my day job, so yeah, naturally I wanted to. <laughs> naturally I wanted to make that character, right? Um, so very interesting, unique idea. The picture must be photoshopped. He's not that buff. Obviously, maybe that's it. Right? Yeah. My Photoshop sense is tingling. <laughs> Thick on the bottom, but skinny on the top. Yeah, I don't know. It's just like. It's almost like a brute frame. And maybe it's because of Valrafts. Because, like, you look at other Valrafts, I don't consider them to be, like, this kind of thick, I guess. <laughs> um, I mean, maybe uh, maybe the Cormos. I don't know. That could be a bit of a bias from me from playing so much digital. Because you're just looking at the Red Guard. He never looks like that stocky. He looks kind of like, you know. For a, for a guy wearing armor and stuff, he still looks pretty lean, you know. Okay. So, uh, let's take a look at, like, so cards, 10 cards. Pretty decent hand size there, so not bad. Um, health as well, good health pool. Not, like, the biggest, or not the smallest. I think, actually, that's pretty big. Is that the biggest you get? No. Might be. Is there, is there one that starts at 10 on level 1? It's pretty high, though. It's pretty high. I don't know if it is the max. It feels pretty high, though. There's that one character that has more HP than the dust. Yeah, the Amber Aegis, of course, which we... Yeah, that one, yeah, it's got crazy amounts of health. But in terms of, like, regular Gloomhaven characters, this seems like quite a lot. So, anyway. Decent amount of health, right? A brute starts at 10, doesn't it? I had a feeling that the brute was what I was thinking of, too. I was thinking of that. The old brute. The old brute. Board game 613 gifted a tier 1 sub to Corey Fleury. Hey, BG. Thank you so much for gifting us up, buddy. I really appreciate it. Welcome, Corey Fleury, to the quest. Make sure to thank BG in chat. BG, for people who don't know is the guy who kind of brought all of this together, you know, um, in conjunction with other people. But he's sort of the one who managed to kind of bring everything together and organize all of the printed copies and get everything kind of together into one package. So appreciate it, man. And uh, thank you so much for the gifted sub. Welcome to the Adventure in Pi, Corey. Um, so. Let's go into the mechanics then for the Fire Knight. So ladder i've we've been memeing on ladders for a little while in chat because we knew this one was coming so ladder the fire knight carries a unique special overlay token called ladder that you may climb up to gain powerful bonuses to your abilities the ladder is considered difficult terrain for all figures and ignores the effects of any trap obstacle or hazardous terrain overlay overlay tile underneath it until the ladder is removed the ladder may be placed and or recovered at any time during your turn, even during movement. You may place the ladder into any adjacent unoccupied hex that is either adjacent to a wall or on top of a trap, obstacle, or hazardous terrain overlay tile. Interesting. Either This is either adjacent to a wall or on top of a trap, obstacle, or hazardous terrain overlay tile. Okay. You may recover the ladder as long as it's unoccupied from any adjacent hex. And it must be recovered before you can place it again. Okay. The ladder cannot be placed on an obstacle that cannot be destroyed or that has hit points. The ladder is unaffected and remains in its current hex if any obstacle is destroyed while it is on top of it. Okay. Additionally, the ladder is indestructible and cannot be destroyed by any means. Right. So... Thematically, it's like we're climbing on top of the obstacle or we're like climbing up the wall, I guess. The trap one is a bit weird for me because it's like, what, we're climbing on top of the trap? That one's a bit of a weird disconnect for me. Um, but that makes sense for the obstacle. Um, hazardous terrain. Like, similar to the trap, like I don't see that as like something that you're like... Because Hazardous Terrain sometimes is just like floor lava. And sure, you probably think the Fire Knight would be pretty good at that. But I don't know. You just walk over the trap. So it's like the, the ladder is 
horizontal. The ladder is a bridge. Ah, okay. Okay, yeah, all right, okay. The ladder acting like a bridge. Okay, I can see that. Whereas, like, I was thinking, like, oh, yeah, you're climbing stuff up, up stuff. It's like those platform ladders or a wall ladder, right. So, yeah, you're, like, pushing it. Okay, yeah, fine. I get that. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense then. So, an interesting idea. It depends, obviously, how it's utilized, really. But for actually a pretty cool mechanic. Um, it doesn't say, like, what a ladder does here, right? Oh, I said to, oh, yeah, ignore, you ignore traps, obstacles, or hazardous terrain. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, that's actually pretty, that's actually pretty fun, because you could, like, have a lot of good synergy with your team, right? And just be helpful to your team in a way that's, like, not obvious all the time because you know there are ways to be like you can play a support character right and you could be helpful for your team you know healing them blessing them gifting the movement even but actually kind of fundamentally being like hey guys you can just move through this hex it's kind of interesting mm -mm. Noop, noop. hey tim hey ellie indestructible ladder dark steel ladder yeah <clears throat> it's one of those ladders from the infomercials <laughs> like from like we have over here we have like the, the shopping channels we have jml is the big thing over here where they're just like you you'll go to like a garden center and they'll just be selling like weird jml products i actually ended up buying one and it ended up being really useless i bought a wrapping paper cutter and it's just an absolute piece of crap like it's it's a it's like a cylinder that you slide over the rolling wrap paper and it has a blade in it and so the idea is that you just push it down and it cuts like, because it's perfectly formed around the wrapping paper. Rubbish. Never worked. I was, I saw it. We were, it was over Christmas this year. And I, I'm really bad at wrapping presents. And I really dislike it because I always mess up the cutting part of it. And I end up cutting it like wonky. And yeah. So it wasn't particularly expensive. And I thought, you know what? Let's give it a go. And it was rubbish. Absolutely rubbish. Don't get one. It's pretty cool for manipulating monster movement and focus. Yeah, good point. Potentially, like... So, potentially, like, they don't... So, do, do monsters get to use this? Doesn't really say, right? It's considered difficult terrain, so of course monsters will try to avoid it. But in in theory, they could use it. Right? For all figures, yeah. Interesting. So if there was no path to go, and with the movement, it would use that hex, it would use... Mm. I mean, obviously, I guess you probably don't want to do that. You probably want to be on your ladder. Well, I guess we'll find out when we go to the cards. But yeah, there's some very unique interactions here with both enemies and with allies, giving you some extra kind of flexibility on, in certain scenarios. You know, like where you have certain scenarios, you're like, well, guys, you know, you're going to have to bring all these different cards because, you know, it's a scenario where you have lots of difficult terrain or... Um, well, not difficult terrain, hazardous terrain, or loads of traps. You know, there's certain scenarios. This could make those scenarios quite a lot easier. <clears throat> what if you remove the ladder when a monster is on top? Do they get hurt? I mean... I mean, I would presume so. Is 
It says the ladder is unaffected and remains if any obstacle is destroyed while on top of it. I guess that doesn't really make answer the question, does it? But yeah, I mean, it's... It's that the ladder itself is considered difficult terrain. So it's like the ladder kind of replaces... It essentially replaces what is currently there, right? So then when it kind of leaves, then you still got whatever's underneath. It doesn't say, like, remove... It's like you just place it on top. So yeah, I would presume if you were to remove it. Similar to how, like, if you were to play, like, Bone Breaker. <clears throat> it says you can only remove the ladder when it's unoccupied. What does it say that? Did I completely skip over that? Oh, boo. All right, fair enough. <laughs> it does say it. <clears throat> Got excited there. That would be kind of fun, but sure. It might be a little bit unlikely and a bit cute that that situation would happen anyway. Okay, well, I'm kind of interested. It's not a particularly, like, glamorous ability. You know, it's not like, um... You know, some kind of really flashy ability or something like really kind of crazy. But it definitely will make you look at the scenario in different ways, for sure. Make you appreciate scenarios in different ways. The fact that it's difficult terrain will mean that enemies will try to avoid it. So, you know, enemies walking onto your ladder when you want to walk onto your ladder might not be too much of a problem. We'll see. <clears throat> You need a MQ gets excited and skips a balance rule counter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you see, that's what happened. I, I start thinking like, this is how I want it to work. And then it's like, oh, it doesn't work quite either way. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, this is good. This is interesting. Let's have a look and see what we can actually do with these ladders then, shall we? Let's have a look at some cards. It would be nice if the ladder was over a trap. The enemy was on it. If you could pull the ladder out from under it and make it land on the trap. Yeah. I agree that that would be thematically fun, but I guess because it's difficult terrain, you'd have to, like, move the enemy onto it somehow, maybe, because they're probably trying to avoid it unless there was no other hex for them to go to sort of thing. Okay. Right, first card. Forcible entry. Attack five, wound. Push one, create fire, two XP, and a burn. I mean... That's pretty weak. For a burn attack, I would say, even at level one. Um, you know, wound is nice. W obviously, fire is going to be a big part of this character, so I'm presumably we're going to be consuming the element a lot. So that that's obviously quite nice. But you know, considering a lot of characters can get up to about attack five non-burn at level one. Obviously, maybe not with the wound and the push, but I don't feel like that would necessarily make it a burn card. You know. I think it's a quite a costly burn here. Not a, not a very attractive one. Like one that you would burn for 2 XP at the end of a scenario to get an attack off to maybe kill something. But certainly not one that you're like keeping an eye on in your hand, right? Ready to do. So. Bottom's good. Okay. For 15 initiative, that's a good start. It's a good usable initiative. I like that kind of initiative. Can make that work for sure. Uh, move three. If you open a door with this movement, each ally who enters the revealed room gains advantage on all their attacks this round. That's kind of cool. Consume fire to do a push to range two action as well. One XP. Hmm. Quite an aggressive. I like this aggressive. I like it. I like this. This is kind of neat, actually. Interesting idea. If the, if, a, if this character's doing a lot of this kind of stuff, I'm quite interested in this character now. Because it's... <clears throat> it's nice to, like, give your team a bit of... Kind of... A bit of a lift, you know, with your abilities and stuff. You know, someone who plays solo a lot of the time... I do generally like to kind of, you know, find characters that work well together and 
try and plan some really interesting turns around my characters. So, you know, as a solo player, this kind of thing appeals to me. <clears throat> I like it. I like it. And we've got the push to um, range two on the bottom. I mean, if you can get a um, get something into a trap or something with that, then sure. It's not bad. But the range two is a little bit short. This is the kind of card that you probably use with a pair of boots, though. You probably go move three, use a pair of boots alongside it. You probably end up moving, you know, with boots just riding, move like five or something, probably. <clears throat> These guys' cards look nice. Yeah, the border and background are sweet. I'm actually going to go on a limb here and say I don't particularly like the border on these cards. I I find it to be a little bit too much for me. Like, I like it when things are a little bit more subtle. And to me, this is bordering on a bit much. There's a lot of red going on on this card. You know? Um, for me, I think it's, it is... It's bordering on a bit too much. Um, it's certainly not up there with some of the other ones that we've seen, in my personal take. Um, like, I like red. Red is like my favorite color, as evidenced by multiple things on my stream and my giant D20. <laughs> but for me, it's just, it's like, it's quite a lot of red. <clears throat> Why are the enhancement dots are different colors? You're not even sure if the second dot on the top isn't a background image. <laughs> oh, you mean this? Because it's like a, a, a lighter white. Yeah, that's fair. Like, there's these, like, dots here that look almost like they're... Yeah, that's a fair point. This would definitely be a good candidate for an additional plus one move, for sure. Or jump. Good candidate for that, for sure. Okay, well, I, I, I say I feel like the top of this card was is not great. Um, but sure, if you want to get 2xp towards the end of a scenario and you've got something to attack, it's 2xp. This, though, is kind of interesting. The only problem with this kind of effect, though, of course, is that if you are playing in a scenario that doesn't have any doors, this card is pretty bad because you've got, like, a kind of a bad burn top. It's an okay move. Like, would I, would I take a 15 initiative move three? Maybe with a push you know, a push to range to action on it. I mean, it, it's probably pretty close to still making the cut there. I mean, it depends on what other cards we've got. But, you know, I, I mean, I'll play cards that are like a decent amount of movement on a decent initiative with a push action. That's usually going to um, result in some, you know, some good shenanigans with traps and things, right? So, I don't know. But certainly there are going to be some scenarios where this just does not apply. Or maybe, <clears throat> maybe only applies like once. Sorry, I seem like my voice is going all croaky today. I don't know what's going on. Mm -mm. Wait, you need to call me out. Attack five wound plus element plus a niche push one is pretty potent. I'm not saying it's like, it's not a bad ability. But what I'm saying is, is that for a burn, I've we've seen attack, reusable attack values not too far from this. Um, so like for a burn, I think it's like, it's an attack five with wound and push one, you know, create the element, sure. But, you know, there's plenty of reusable attack fours and fives, you know, in the game fairly early on, like for most characters. So I just felt like the overall numbers of it are not like, as an ability on its own, sure, it's a decent value attack, you go and burn it, but it's not like, what I'm saying is that like, if this was an attack four without the wound, you know, we'd be them saying it's a very strong reusable attack, maybe. I don't know. What I'm saying is that I don't feel like it's a great value burn. It's not a card that I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm so glad I bought this because I can use this to burn, right? Burns need to do significant things, and I don't feel like this does something significant. <clears throat> I remind you that mission of web sketch is only a cough. It is only a cough, though. 
It is only a cough, I swear. Yeah, it's just it's just one of those kind of abilities where it needs to be a burn because of the values that are here, but I just generally dislike these types of abilities because I like to find my damage in more reusable sources. And certainly I would be more excited if this was something like, I don't know, like if this was some kind of like, you know, attack three, target two, then I would be, I think I'd be a little bit more like, oh yeah, okay, yeah, like we got a couple of enemies to like deal with. Do you know what I mean? Like just the single target nature of it and just it all being on one thing, I, yeah, I just dislike it because it's, what if you miss on the attack? Well, you've whiffed and there goes your burn and it's just whatever. It just opens you up to potential bad RNG and just not great use. <clears throat> just don't miss, sure. <laughs> All right, next card though. All right, ladder. We've got some ladder stuff going on. Good. Combined effort. Attack three, range three. If you are on your ladder, you may perform strengthen effect what adjacent ally. Okay. All right. I mean, attack three, range three is incredibly solid. Very solid. That's like the baseline, you know, anything above or below that, you know, is that's kind of like where I usually put my benchmark. And that's like, I'm very happy to play attack three, range three um, at level one. And then potentially getting some strength on if we're on our ladder to somebody else. That's pretty good, I think. 19 initiative is maybe not amazing for the strength on sort of synergy if you really wanted to to get somebody else who also wanted to go early but it's still pretty good and of course they could be strengthened for like future turns or something so and it's, it's attack three range three with upside so we'll take it i think nice name for the card yeah combined effort if that helps your buddy draw you know, some plus modifiers rather than minus modifiers on that on their attack, especially at level one. Yeah, you'll take it. You'll definitely take it. I guess the thing here is with ladders in general, like making sure that you can making sure that you can kind of actually find somewhere good to put the ladder. You can always pick the ladders up, right? You can always pick the ladder up. Um Yeah, so maybe placed or recovered at any time during your turn, even during movement. You may place silence to any adjacent unoccupied hex that is either adjacent to a wall or on top of a trap. Yeah, so I guess there's, I guess there is some like potential um, positioning problems with this kind of thing, you know, because of course, the rule, the rules about where a ladder has to be, are a little bit strict, and then also like you're then going to need the ally to be adjacent to the ladder. So there are like a few little things here, but the flexibility of being able to place it at any point during your turn and being able to recover it at any point during your turn, that maybe that flexibility is good enough. Um, but there might be certain scenarios, again, where if it's one big open room without much going on in the middle of it, lots of open space, then, you know, ladders might be a bit more tricky. Okay. Let's look at the bottom. So add plus two attack to all to the next attack performed by an adjacent ally this round. Okay. Plus two attack to the next attack performed by an adjacent ally this round. Okay, so it's only to one attack, basically. So it doesn't say like to the to the entire attack action. So it's basically let's say if you were doing like fire orbs, you would get plus two attack on the first target of fire orbs, being it being a target three. So I mean, it's an extra two damage, basically, as a bottom ability as well. So presumably this character, because of the whole ladder mechanic anyway, there's probably going to be some situations where you're just going to want to stay in one place because you've got a really good ladder position. So you're just like, yeah, this is a great place for the ladder to be. I'm just going to chill on the ladder for a couple of turns. So maybe there's some good scope here to have some nice bottom abilities that don't just move us and do some other cool things. So... I mean, I, I I already like the kind of... I like the kind of cooperative element that this character's already bringing out. Because I don't... I feel like there's less characters that kind of do that that we've seen in the Crimson Scales. 
There's definitely been a lack of that in Crimson Scales, I think. Apart from there's been like maybe like, you know, some of the more dedicated support characters. But in terms of like, hey, like everybody, you get a buff, you get a buff, you get a buff. We've already seen two things that kind of buff um, uh, the buff allies. Two abilities that kind of buff allies that, that are kind of uh, different and, and kind of cool. So, yeah, I mean, I like it. Gloomhaven's a team game, right? You can always cover your friend's traps. That's some good synergy there. You wanted to play like a trap build on like on like the artificer or um who else has traps there was definitely another one screams teamwork more than most characters because it's also not just passive support it's coordinated damage and support yeah yeah for sure like, it would be kind of cool for an for an ally to just walk up next to you and just get this buff. Especially if you've got like some big single target you're trying to kill. Like trying to kill bosses and stuff like that or, or troublesome elites. Stuff like this can help a lot. Mm -hmm. Chain guard. Thank you, chain guard. Yeah, that was the one. Yeah, chain guard would be a pretty good combination with this guy with the whole ladders and stuff. Although perhaps the chain guard would get annoyed at you because you keep putting ladders on top of his traps. He's trying to trigger them. I don't know. <laughs> you can cover void pits too. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea with the hollow pact. Interesting. I'm liking the vibe so far. Like just collaborative good synergy with just other characters like okay this is looking good All right collective combat attack two add plus one attack to each of your allies adjacent to the target add range three and gain one xp if you are on your ladder ah so this is kind of cool too it's almost like a um it's kind of like a, a scoundrel effect right But then potentially we could do it ranged. I'm not quite sure how thematically this character can do ranged damage. Are they, are they, what are, are they throwing their, their big axe or are they hurling a fireball or what are they, you know, what are they, they're using a hose? Well, how is it kind of like, hmm. The straight up worse attack than the other one. Okay, not straight up. No, I mean, it could be better, right? I mean, obviously, if you're playing two player, this would be not so great. But if you're playing, um, if you're playing like four player with a couple of melee characters, maybe, or maybe you've got a couple of summons going on, I think like that's pretty good. <clears throat> Throwing water with a hose. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not entirely sure where the ranged thematically comes from I mean the other thing to think about is like would you rather be playing the top or bottom of this card and I think realistically you probably would rather be playing the bottom if you can get the action because it's like a free two damage right it's like an extra two attack that's hopefully two damage see there's potential you miss but you know, for a bottom action, that's pretty efficient. You know, you would play something that was 19 initiative attack too, right? Like, that would be pretty cool. So, you know, you can play this and you can play this together, right? That's the beauty of it. Um, he's a pyromancer. He doesn't necessarily fight fire. He controls fire. So it is a fireball then. You like the idea of allies crowding around the guy and you throwing your weapons. <laughs> Hold that guy. Yeah, exactly. You're just pinning him down, right? I think this is... I mean, it's a ver it's a variation. And, and the good thing is, is that it's like, well, it, you know, it didn't want to necessarily just print some boring attack. Like, it's actually kind of an interesting attack. And sure, sometimes it might just be an attack to range three. 
Sometimes it might just be... Well, it's probably never going to be a melee attack too. Like, because you'll just use your default attack, right? There's no real reason to use it for that. So... I guess at worst, it's an attack two range three, which is, of course, a bit underwhelming. But at best, it could be something more like an attack four, which is very good value. 64 initiative plays quite nicely into this kind of thing as well, because you, you will want to go later in the round, because you probably want your allies to get into a position before you go. So, although I don't like this initiative because it's, you know, I like it to either be, you know, early or late, not kind of in a middle ground somewhere between 40 and 60 is like the worst kind of initiatives because you're like, well, you know, anything can happen. But, you know, potentially on 64 initiative, a, a bit of the round will play out and maybe you'll um, have a better opportunity to get more buffs, right? Magical Christmas land attack, eh? Yeah, possibly. If you could try and make it work. They try and make it work. The bottom of this is on the next three attacks performed by you or an ally, add plus one attack when adjacent to an ally. Hey, that's pretty neat too. Very flexible. You or an ally. Form by you and I have plus one attack when okay so this is okay so this is like the enemy needs to have allies around it this one is you need to have allies with you right they're kind of like they're not exactly opposite but so this would be you you've got an enemy and they've got hopefully two of your allies around them so you're ganging up on that one guy whereas thematically this one is more like I'm making an attack and like, you know, my buddy next to me kind of lends a helping hand, you know, like kind of gives me a bit of a assistance with my attack to get an extra plus one. Now everybody is the scoundrel. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, this guy has super good synergy with a scoundrel, actually. <clears throat> this would trigger when no ally are adjacent to each other, you think? Yes, because it just says on the next three attacks performed by you or an ally. It doesn't say when adjacent. You know what I mean? So, like, the way you would word it otherwise would be on the next three attacks performed by you or an, an ally, when adjacent to an ally, add plus one attack. So you would bring you would bring this down to the end of the sentence and bring this up if the intent was that it only triggered, right? Wasting charges. I mean, at least this isn't a burn, bro, right? At least this isn't a burn. The problem with this, though, is, of course, you play it. I guess you'd want to go, like, really late. So what you'd probably want to do is you'd probably want to go late and then maybe attack like or do something with your top action. Then you'd want to play this bottom action. And then on the next round, maybe go early and position yourself to somewhere where you could get the buff or something like that. Also, if you like, so for example, if we get some kind of multi-target thing, this could trigger like, so for example, if we have fire orbs, we could play this, then on the next turn go early and do fire orbs, right? And get plus one attack to the entire action, basically, because it's the next three attacks. So this could be quite a good combo card to just play super late and then next turn be like, right, I'm going to go early and I'm going to position here and somebody play like this card that's going to make a super good use out of it. Like someone's got a target three type ability and they can just go off with it. Give themselves advantage, Away you go. And it's basically like you're just giving them a free power potion at that point, right? So it's, you're right, there's a pitfalls here, whereas it could, if you play it at the wrong time, in theory, it could just fall off. And I wouldn't be surprised if this is one of those types of cards that kind of gets misplayed a lot, like during, because of rules stuff. Like I could see this very easily, like someone playing this and then just forgetting about it. 
like just not realizing that the card's in front of them when someone takes an attack action like there's a bit of potential for that i think because it's you know not it's a bit weird um but i also like the idea that you could play it late and try to set up for a really big next turn maybe good card to play while waiting next to the door yeah yeah, and your downtime is you got you got literally nothing to lose because it's not actually um it's not a burn so you've got nothing to lose really you can always discard it from your active area before the charges run out if you really needed to okay so so far we've had like some really good sort of team team play type cards and some pretty you know okay attacks like nothing crazy nothing to get us really super excited about attacking yet but you know, I feel like we've had some good stuff. Controlled aggression. On the next two attacks performed by you or an adjacent ally, gain advantage and add wound. On the next two attacks performed by you or an adjacent ally. I mean, that's pretty cool too. I only just played both of these together. Hmm, the problem the problem with something like this, it's it's good, but the problem with something like this is it's a top action. You know, on a on a bottom action, you can kind of like, yeah, okay, like sometimes I don't need to move. And you know, top actions are the most premium in the game. You know, every top action usually is progressing the game in some way, you know, by killing something or whatever. It's why I'm not like a huge fan of wind up, like on the demo. I'm not a huge fan of that card because I just feel like you play wind up and it's like, well, why don't I just go and do an attack on somebody, you know? Like it's not, yeah, there are some times like between rooms that you can play them, of course, but between rooms, you're kind of like long resting and stuff like that. And it doesn't, the game doesn't always work out in that way. Like there's always like a, hey, play this while you're long resting. It's like, yeah, but the game doesn't always work out like that. So... Hmm. It is good, but potentially better than than wind up actually. Mm. Hey Dabba. Mm. Mm. He's got bottom attacks, don't worry. Okay, well if we've got bottom attacks, then we can maybe make use of that too. The move four redeems it quite a bit. Yeah, I mean this is the like it's it's a it's the 77 initiative is not as late as I would like, <laughs> you know? Um, 77 initiative is not as late as I would like. But move four, you're taking move fours, right? You're always going to be playing move four. Move four is, like, just useful. There's going to be so many times when you're like, I just need to move a decent amount. Here's a move four. So... Perhaps this card is just, it ends up being a move four the majority of the time. And then occasionally you're going to have some good opportunities maybe to play the top. And we'll see how that happens. But yeah, like I, I, I follow this is a bit better than wind up, but it's not. not, not. I wasn't a fan of wind up and I'm not a huge fan of this. The, the good thing about this though is it at least is the flexibility of an adjacent ally as well. So at least there's some combo potential there whereas wind up is very linear it's just hey you on your next two attacks but on uh for this at least you could go okay i'm gonna do this and then you know you want to combo off with like you know a lightning bolt doing um flurry of axes or you want to combo with um spell weaver doing inferno right there's other abilities that other characters have that would work so well with this that and perhaps that's also just like, hey, that's fine. We can, we'll find some really cool combo with this and it will be great, right? Um, you know, getting advantage and wound just on like two, two extra things with like Inferno or with Flurry of Axes could be quite good. <clears throat> mm -mm. You think it's good if your play styles more so hang back on turn one? Yeah, possibly. But again, I feel like 
Uh, I mean, I, I, I don't know how many of these types of abilities we have. You, you have to be careful about your actions, right? You know, every character kind of has to be able to do some basics, which is move and attack, in my opinion, in some way. And this has got good move, so it's the biggest move we've seen so far. So we'll, we'll take it for now. We'll see. You play Sun, so you always appreciate the highest moves. Yeah. M moves are a requirement. You need moves to play the game. So at the moment, we don't have any other really great moves apart from that move three. So it might be an auto include <laughs> at level one just because it's a move four. <clears throat> okay, next up, rapid response. So consume fire, add plus one to each move and attack ability performed during this action. So we can move to this movement must end adjacent to an ally, attack two. Okay, so if we consume fire, it's move three and attack three, which is pretty damn good. Now the movement must ending adjacent to an ally. That is... Obviously, if you plan around it, it doesn't really matter. Obviously, this is an excellent action if you if you plan around it and you play this well. But also, it's an ability that might not even work because you don't have this, right? Or it's not a good opportunity to do it. But potentially, this is very, very strong. I mean, you've got you know high-level ability cards that, that have you know, decent-sized moves and attacks on the top, and they're very, very playable. So, I mean, this is a move three, attack three, as a single action on the top of a card at level one, which is, you know, comparable almost to something like Careless Charge on Lightning Bolt, which is like a level six or seven card, I think. So if you combo this off, this is actually insanely good value. Like if you get this reliably and you can work around this, this is actually like the kind of value that you would look at at like level three, four, five cards easily and above. <clears throat> this is great for a level one card. Move two, attack two is still good for level one. Move three, attack three is great. Yeah, if you don't have the fire and you just do a move two, attack two, that's also just insanely good. Because <laughs> it's just, it's free, it's free. It's uh, it's essentially like a free move two, because of course you could have just played the top action as an attack two. That's one thing you've got to kind of be wary of here, because realistically you're getting a free move two action, which works very well, of course, because you've got cards like this, which are really going to like play very nicely into that. I mean, of course you do this, and this is twelve initiative, so you play this. And this together, because 64 is not a great initiative. And then suddenly, make sure you got the fire. You're moving three, attacking for four. On 12 initiative. And potentially your ally will then go after you because you're now next to your ally. And then they're going to get an additional plus two attack on them. I mean, that is actually like in terms of raw numbers, that's actually pretty insane. You're doing an attack four. You're getting a free move action. And then your ally is getting potentially two charges of plus one attack if they're going to do like a multiple attack themselves or something like that. That's really good value. Like in a single turn, you've essentially gained what? Three. You, that's six. Non-burn. You've essentially kind of acquired six damage. Through the, through the playing of two cards. Moved twice. It's pretty crazy. The night is fire. Yeah. This is really, really strong. Granted, it's conditional. Because, you know, there's going to be situations when this doesn't come up or something like if you're playing two player a card like this becomes quite rough because you then really need to be like you need to move here we need to move here like in a mo in a multiplayer situation this kind of thing unless you're very um communicative with your team and you really work very well together um you know that this kind of thing will start to potentially like 
get those communication rules will start becoming more and more gray as you play on because you know you need to be very tight with your team around the table like i want to please be here please let's go and do this you know you're gonna have to be very careful with the way that you kind of signpost things because you know your turn could basically be unraveled if things don't go the way you want but 12 initiative is a very early initiative so realistically i mean you should be able to say hey you over there i'm gonna go really early this turn just don't go really early and i'll come over to you and then like okay like you know you don't like you should be able to coordinate it because of the initiative if this initiative was a bit rougher than 12 like it was higher or something maybe a bit more like a mid-20s 30s coordinating with your team might be a bit harder but 12 you can kind of say i'm going pretty early like just make sure you don't go super early and then that will probably be okay <clears throat> This guy needs three players minimum. Agreed. Yeah. This is starting to look like three characters is three or four. I mean, summons too. Like, if you've got a couple of good summons, this could also work well with that. This guy needs a friend. What are we talking about? A dog? Well, I guess if we are playing in two player, then maybe, yeah, maybe if there is a summon that this character gets, maybe that can help. So we'll see. But on the on the face of it this is possibly one of the best if you get this this could be one of the strongest level one actions i've ever seen because it's it's the kind of ability that if this was printed on a level three or four card i wouldn't be shocked you know i'd be like that's pretty good you know <laughs> i'd see it at level three or four and be like hey that's pretty good that's playable you know? And you can enhance both of these, by the way. Pretty good. Summon items might actually be meta. Yeah. I mean, if you just want to have allies on the board. Pretty good idea. All right. The bottom here is move five, create fire. Add plus three attack to your next attack while adjacent to an ally. Um... And then it's a cons it's a burn. So this is a burn, but it's a move five crate, which big decent amount of move. Well, good, very good amount of move actually. Then create fire, which is obviously the element that we want. And then an additional plus three attack. That's a it's a pretty good burn ability. Sometimes you'll see like a move six or seven, and it'll just be like move seven crate fire burn. I like this. Because you can immediately like just go and like go ham on something, right? Like you could go for the double burn turn at the end of the scenario, right? Just go, I'm going all in. Not bad. Not bad at all. <clears throat> right. I think rapid response so far has been our best card. I think that's pretty pretty handily the only thing i think we're looking for at the moment is an easy way to make fire we haven't really seen that yet so we, we need a way to reliably hit this fire at the moment everything's been burn make fire which is not really although thematically good isn't gameplay wise good for us right now <clears throat> I'm going to be waiting a hot minute. Like it. Well, maybe we can enhance one of these moves, right? Let's get check, check a little fire on the bottom of that. That's what I'm talking about. Expensive, but... Gets the job done. Um, Playing with fire. Attack three. Add range three if you're on a ladder. So we've only actually seen a couple of ladder bonuses so far. And to be honest... It's just been like either melee or like make it ranged. Gain that strength. Though. Like the ladder bonuses have been almost more like playstyle related more than necessarily um, like, a, like a bonus. You can consume fire to add like wound and advantage, which makes that a very strong attack. An attack three, range three with wound and advantage, very strong at level one. 
To be honest, even just a melee attack with wound and advantage as well is very strong. Either or. So, very, very solid. But we need fire. Like, without fire, this is average. We really need fire. <clears throat> See you, Dion. See you again soon. Hmm. Yeah, we need fire. We need fire so bad right now to make these abilities like just insane. Like, like some characters when you have elements, right? It kind of, it's like, oh, you get, they get a little bit better. So it's like a nice bonus if you have the element there. You know, you've played well, you've got the element there, you use it, it's a little bit more. But then you also get abilities like cold fire, which adds stun. <laughs> and this character feels much more closer to like cold fire right now than it does for like, you know, ones are like, oh, like the Void Warden. Add ice to add muddle to the attack or something. You know, it's like, this is feeling much more in terms of power level. Like, we want to be consuming the element. Like, that's what's going to make it the, the good ability. Everything else is sort of like, mm, it's fine without. At level one, you're most dependent on allies and losses for fire. Well, yeah, you know, mana potions as well, I suppose. We can get some items that might help us out with that. Uh, attack five, add range three if you're on a ladder. So same deal again. Create fire, two XP, burn. Yeah, so uh, same again. Make fire, burn. Um, decent sort of attack. Uh, it's on the bottom, which is nice. And of course, we get that range three if we're on a ladder. I guess... Thematically, it's more that we... I don't really know. Thematically, we're on range on the ladder. We're up high or we're sort of... I guess we're not kind of like surrounded by the enemy. We're kind of like on our own little island on the ladder sort of thing. Kind of makes sense. Hey, Bones. Newt, newt. New enhancements might be handy for this guy. An extra fire for 60 gold is always handy. I think that that's like the... So far, I am like enhancing fire on any bottom move ability that's just going to be used as a move. Like this, for example, Prime. Um, I mean, it's got to be. And if, if we're saying that we need to depend more on our losses to make fire, then, you know, maybe I was a bit harsh on this. Because, you know, we're going to need... We're going to need a couple of cards. We do only have 10 cards, though. So it's not like we can just burn a card every... You know, two or three rounds. Definitely need to find a dependable source. This card is going to be crazy good. If, you can, if, you're, if you're on your ladder and you have fire, this card's crazy good. If you're not... Then it's average. Okay, Fire Whirl, Attack 1, Range 2, Big AoE, like it, Consume Fire to add plus 1 attack, okay, Wound all figures in the targeted area, okay, so it could do some wounding to, uh, to our own team if we're not careful, Create Fire and Air, 2 XP, I don't know if Air is going to be some other element that we actually use, or maybe it's just more thematically it adds Air, which kind of makes sense, it's a big... Fire will whip up a big kind of a big bit of fire. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. It's over, Anakin. <laughs> With the ladder mechanic having the high ground. It's like the big one. It is pretty similar to the big one, yeah. Same same size. Same kind of thing. Big one made fire and earth. Does it make both of the elements or just fire? I mean, attacking everything for two here. Creating fire is... I mean, it's okay, I guess. I mean, Icy Blast is a card that is kind of played. And it is... Not too dissimilar. We'll have a look at perks when we get to... Um, before we go to level 2. So we'll finish all of the level 1 and the X cards. And then we'll, we'll check the perks. But 
be interesting to see like how like this character does feel like they're fairly damage focused so i'll be interested to see what kind of deck we end up with wounds nado calling a fire tornado would be a bit too on the nose you guess maybe people might think it's a bit too similar to that sure because it's well i mean it's kind of strictly worse than the tornado though right I mean, Dirt Tornado is not a burn. Doesn't have the wound, I guess. What do the X's on the hexes mean? They don't really mean it. It's just they're targetable hexes. Um... That today is also a broken card to be fair. Yeah, maybe not fair to compare too many cards to that. That card wouldn't have been like so broken if they if it was not enhanceable. <laughs> that would also help a lot. Uh so the bottom of this is move three. This movement is unaffected by difficult or hazardous terrain. I'm, I mean, maybe that'll come into it. I guess it means you don't have to put the ladder down if you needed to. I mean, I quite often play the one on, uh, there's the level, is it level two card? On the demo, which is like move four with this effect. I play that all the time on the demo, so sure. I can see that being pretty useful. Plus it's got an enhancement dot, more fire. <laughs> it's good at stepping onto the, oh yeah, good point. Because technically ladders are, considered to be difficult terrain right so yeah you could basically get onto a ladder for uh, like if there was a ladder that was a couple of spaces away you could just get straight onto it sure yeah it makes it a lot more usable i i would love to put fire on this then oh man it'd be so good 51 initiative is ugh, yuck though so you can place a ladder mid movement. Oh, okay. I see what you mean. So you would move like, so you could essentially like move forward to place the ladder in front of you and then move on to it all in one action. Yeah, that'd be quite cool. And then you can, then you're away, right? Yeah. <clears throat> That's actually like pretty decent. Because if you need to get onto your ladder, the fact that it's always going to cost you two points of movement to get onto your ladder normally means that this is actually a very good card at just getting onto the ladder. I will say that so far, I haven't been hugely impressed with the ladder buffs, though. I mean, adding, changing a melee attacker to a ranged one is good. Because, you know, you're not always going to have to be able to have the ladder in a position where the melee attacks might be. So that kind of helps to mitigate the disadvantage of ladders sometimes being awkward to place. But yeah, this is very good at that. I, just, I, I want another card that really like sells me on ladders, you know? Okay, next up, Light Irons. Attack two, strengthen, affect all allies in the targeted area. Okay, so it's like a little, okay, so it's um, sweeping blow or whatever it's called for the brute, basically but with an additional strengthen on all allies in the area. Sweeping Blow power creep. Yeah, I mean, Sweeping Blow was never particularly powerful, never particularly played. But adding a strengthen effect to your allies, maybe. But it is only allies in the targeted area. So would I attack two, two things to strengthen an ally? I mean, I guess it's fine. Pretty good with collective combat bottom. Yeah, it's true. Not, not too bad a, a pairing there. We're playing a game with magic, fantastical classes and abilities to insta-kill things and a ladder doesn't impress you. No, I'm unfortunately not. <laughs> The indestructible the indestructibleness of ladders impresses me you know i what i think is the fire knight should set up a business selling indestructible ladders because they would do very well i would think <laughs> uh 
Um, yeah, this is... I mean, this is kind of average to okay, depending. Like, there's some good combos with this character to play two cards together with it. But I also feel like collective combat, I really wanted to play it with this 12. I don't know. That just seemed like the best, the best combo for me so far between that. So, yeah, it's another potential combo. But 30 initiative and then 64 initiative... You know, you're kind of like you're in that area of I don't know what's going on and you wouldn't be able to like it's difficult for you to do that and still make sure that everything kind of happens against certain enemies. It might, but I feel like it's a bit of a risky play. You're kind of just hoping that the chips sort of all fall in the right place potentially. So I don't know. It just seems to me a bit. It doesn't hang together very coherently. 13 initiative does give your allies some time to get to you. But it also gives a lot of time for enemies to just wail on you. Which, not a fan of. <clears throat> they only have one ladder though. Well, obviously they'd have to like make more. I mean, they've made one. Surely they can make another one, right? <laughs> Surely that's what they would do. I mean, come on. I'm assuming that instead of spending time fighting fires, they would spend time making ladders. <laughs> that's would be like set up a, a stall with one ladder on it and try and sell it. Like, is it destructible ladder? What do you want? I'd like 10 million for it or something. Crazy. I mean, it's indestructible. You'll only ever need to buy this ladder. And you'll never have to buy another ladder again. That's how good it is. <laughs> God. The next five times you end your turn on your ladder, you may perform a heal two, range two. Okay. Five, five charges is a good amount of charges. Yeah, that's ten heal split up across lots of little heals across multiple turns. I don't mind that. I think that's kind of okay. Well, I feel, feel, I feel like this character's maybe... Th there's a lot of burns here that we might be like, I just want to situationally burn this to get fire, so... Nice. Can we sustain something like this? But certainly in a scenario where there's lots of wound kicking around, you're against enemies that are constantly wounding you or poisoning you, this could be quite good. Mm-mm-mm-mm. Hmm. I, I feel like in, in general, this card's are probably a bit underwhelming. But it might have a place. Is that an enhancement dot? Yes? <laughs> no? Yes. Yes, it is. Oh, boy. This will be handy as hell in Drake's Nest. Yeah, against Drake's. Against uh, Inox Archers as well. Against... Oh, well, a bunch of enemies just poison you constantly. Vipers. If you were to enhance this, it could be... It feels like a fairly decent enhancement, but I feel like we've seen other better enhancement opportunities. Doesn't seem that bad to me. Makes it easier for the allies. Yeah, I I'm liking the idea that you might actually be able to, like, attack three enemies and give one ally strength. Excuse me. Ooh. The dot colors changes with the background. Yeah. I feel like the the background's obviously like these are not like white dots. They're just sort of like almost like transparency on the card or something. On the design on the back. Don't think it works. 
quite as well as just a plain white dot. Yeah, I'm so so on light irons. There's potential there, I think, but is it going to be worth it? I don't, I'm not so not so sure. Um, combat medic heal three, range two. If a negative condition is removed with this heal, the target gains strengthen, and you gain one XP. I mean, it's a heal action. It's three. It's range two instead of range three, but it does have upside here. Giving people strengthen. The good thing is that this could remove stuff like immobilize, I guess, which could be really annoying. Obviously, like, my thing with stun and disarm is that you should never get stunned or disarmed by the way you play. So I never really consider them to be a legitimate negative condition to worry about <laughs> because, it's like, you just deal with it. The only time that sometimes changes is wind demons, where you can't, it can't be helped. Um, but certainly getting rid of a mobilize model, like changing a model into a strengthen, that's fairly decent. But of course, you're kind of hoping that that person's also needs some health. Removing poison, wound, of course, okay, but the heal would have done that anyway. You know, so it's like the heal gets blocked on a poison, so it feels a bit bad, I guess. Wound is okay, I guess. Mm -hmm. Newt, newt. So this looks way better in Trails of Ashes. There's a tank class that likes to spam self wound. Oh, okay. That could be quite interesting then. And it's a class that generates fire. Perfect synergy. Okay. Well, so I'm, I'm not like. A, I mean, this is an elite. It's an interesting heal, which is more than i have to say about most heals one thing so far I've, I've noticed about this character is that you know they're they are at least creating like interesting abilities you know they're not just creating like you know generic abilities you know, this could have just been like a heal three range three with not much else going on but it has actually got like some interesting synergy potentially with other things and uh, an interesting like upside and the range two will make it a little bit harder to play but might also mean that you have to stick closer to your allies. This is a character that wants to stay close to their allies, so perhaps the range two is actually not a problem at all anyway. Uh, the bottom is move three. Remove one negative condition from one adjacent ally if you do. I want... Now that is probably a bit more useful for me because it's like you're moving and you're getting an extra bonus out of it. Again, you want to stick with your allies. So I think I like the bottom more than I do the top. How is the fire knight so far like been pretty good we've got a good mix of sort of damage and support so it's, it's a little bit of a different angle so this i guess this is the most like supporty type card that we've seen so far but we've got lots of stuff that um buffs us or an ally so it's like you know either us or our ally can get a bonus for, for something which is quite nice so it means that you can play this character as a bit more of a support to try and combo with other characters or you could play it a bit more you know inwardly focused and just try and get some really good attacks off yourself there's definitely some um some flexibility there like if you were playing in like two player three player four player whatever like there's some some cards there that will be gonna be great used in one way at like four player but maybe better used in a different way at like two or three so it's like yeah i mean that's it's an interesting angle to be like support damage rather than necessarily like, I don't know, something like different than that. Support control, hard. No control abilities yet. <clears throat> it's like a cross between sun, soul and fire. I'd say it's actually got quite a lot of synergy with um, Scoundrel. Like, I think it's got a, a big affinity. Like, the whole adjacent to ally type thing, I think is a pretty Scoundrel-like, especially when you're talking about damage. That's a very Scoundrel-like ability. You know, it's got... It's kind of got flanking built in as a mechanic. Can I put on some background music, please? There is background music playing. Do you not hear it? I can hear it. <clears throat> yeah.
Can you hear it, Tut Tut? You can't hear it? I mean, it's definitely there. I put the sound up a little bit. There you go. You can hear it technically. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> All right. Um. Yeah, moving on. I think this card's. I think I like this card the bottom more than I do the top, but maybe that's my my own like feeling about healing <laughs> abilities in general. You can hear it now. It might have been... I did turn up a little bit, but it might have been a bit of a quieter track as well. Some of the tracks aren't all balanced the same on this playlist. Um, so, coordinated attack. We've got attack 2, range 3. If you are on your ladder, place your character token on the target. All allies gain advantage on all their attacks. Targeting that enemy this round. Okay. Hmm. It's a bit of a bit of a nothing kind of attack from you though, right? It's like an, an attack two range three from you. You don't get the benefit. This character seems quite good at like nuking something down though. This is something that's really only gonna benefit like a three and a four person party. Two two player, I feel like this is pretty weak, unless you have summons or something else going on. Because like you'd you'd need like at least two allies to uh, get the benefit for this to probably outweigh the fact that you've just done an attack too. Not early enough initiative for this, you don't think? Twenty two. You might be right. That's you'd probably want to be low teens. Sort of at worst, maybe. I mean, 22 is still fairly... I mean, if, uh, this character might use... Might use um, sandals, possibly. Might use boost of speed. You'll finally use this persistent for a few levels. Okay, well, let's have a look at the bottom because I feel like the top is is uh, it's an interesting idea, but the fact that it's only an attack two from you kind of puts me off a little bit because then you really do need your allies to be attacking. And the thing is, is that when you're playing like, you know, when I'm playing, I don't always focus on just one enemy. You're kind of spreading stuff down and then you see what happens. Like, okay, you drew some good modifiers. Okay, great. Like, I don't know, it just feels a little bit... A, a little bit specialist into on particular enemies. Rather than being maybe just like, oh yeah, really useful in every scenario. Because you, know, you could be playing with characters who's like, oh yeah, well, I'm stunning these guys this round. Okay, what are you doing? Okay, I'm attacking and I'm giving advantage to everybody who's attacking this. Okay, well, I'm stunning. So, like, I'm playing some support ability or control ability. So, I'm not, I'm not attacking. Okay. What are you doing? Well, I was actually going to attack this guy over here because they're going to be give me this bonus, you know, and then also you have to be on your ladder, which I don't know how hard it's going to be to be on your ladder. Probably pretty easy because of the way that you can move it whenever you want, place it really whenever you want. As long as you're not in a scenario with no legal hexes to place it in or very few, you sh should be okay with the ladder, I would think. I don't know. Feels a bit weak to me, maybe. But if you're against a boss, obviously, and everybody can really get a benefit from this, then maybe you're not so bad. But a lot of people will will have innate advantage in a lot of other things that they do. Like, you know, if you're generally you're an attack focused character, you know, people chase after, you know, they get they get eagle eye goggles, they chase after strength and enhancements, or they have strength and or advantage through their own abilities. You know, it's something that they try to go get. So I'm just thinking like maybe this would be, maybe just. And in the end, not really worth it. <clears throat> Where's the insta killer already? You're getting impatient. 
I, there probably won't be one, but we'll see. Um, so the bottom of this is at the end of each of your turns, if you perform an attack ability during your turn, one adjacent ally with strengthen may perform attack two. Okay. And that is a two XP is a persistent effect. It's a persistent ability. So at the end of each of one of our turns, if we performed an attack, one adjacent ally that has strengthen may perform attack two. So this is where all of that kind of this stuff comes into play, right? Um, I, there was another one. Yeah, here we go. Like combined effort, of course, works really well with this. Seems very like combo heavy. Like to me, this isn't the kind of persistent ability where you'll burn it and just, yeah, we're going to get some really good value over the course of a scenario. This is definitely like a, you need to build a composition around me in order to really make this work. And when it works, it's going to be strong, but you really need to build a team around it. So it's going to be more suitable for a solo player than it is necessarily going to be for a group dynamic because or the group needs to have very complementary mercenaries that maybe strengthen themselves. Um, you know, you would need to come up with something. Like, it it screams of, like, build something for this, you know? Rather than being like, hey, just burn this on turn one and forget about it. You're going to get some great value over the course of the scenarios. No, you really do need to play with it in mind. Mm -hmm 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 -hmm. Did your Falcon redeem? Did the Falcon not go? Did the Falcon not play? The Falcon's been broken occasionally recently. I'm not quite sure why the Falcon has been broken recently. Here you go. There he goes. The Falcon's been occasionally been breaking for some reason. It's also position heavy. See, it didn't work again there. Hmm. Well, I'll just play it. <laughs> I'll just play it again, but there you go. <laughs> oh, I'll have to look into it. It's, for some reason on this particular scene, it might just have something's come unstuck, maybe, in the back end. Everything else seems to be working, I think, right? Oh, points. Yeah, oh, points are up, so. Should be working okay on the other one. Mm -mm -mm -mm. <laughs> See, that one works fine. <laughs> There are some strength and attack modifiers, though. Well, in this character, interesting. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll see. I I do feel like this. Good, that one's working. I feel like this card. Both halves of this card are more like an X card to me rather than a level one card. Like it feels more like a sideboard card than it does. Like this is the kind of card that's gonna work really good in certain parties and certain play styles and in other parties it's gonna feel lackluster so it feels more like an x card to me than it does like a straight up level one card the thing is it's 22 initiative which is pretty decent so you know maybe that might end up being a bit of a consideration at some point but yeah one of the more interesting cards but you need to work around it existing exactly it's not a fire and forget type card and it's the kind of card that you almost need to be like like so for even for the top of coordinated attack you kind of need to be like okay guys are we like are we attacking this round or you know what are you doing what are you doing and, and if you're not in a you're not in a, a group of three or four of you and you're all kind of doing that kind of stuff then it's all gonna fall down and yeah there'll be groups of, of people who will never get much out of either of these two abilities because it just won't sync up in a meaningful way. And 
it'll just feel mediocre. All right, Fiery Charisma, first X card, true X card. Uh, one adjacent ally may perform two of the following abilities in any order. So you can either attack to, move to, or heal to self. You may forgo your bottom action to add plus one to the value of the abilities performed. Is that us foregoing our bottom action? Or the ally foregoing their bottom action? Is it the Fire Knight giving up the bottom action or the... It's you. Hmm. I mean, giving an ally like attack three, heal three, or attack three, move three. I think you're always taking attack here. It's just whether or not you're taking the move or the heal, right? <laughs> I mean, I'm never not taking the attack as one of the two options, probably, unless, I mean, I guess it's between rooms you might consider, but I don't know. That just feels a bit weird to me because then you're not moving. So then it would always be a move to heal to. That would be it because you would need to probably move with them. Like the only time you're not playing this as an attack is towards the end of a room to try and get through a door or get towards a door. And in which case you don't want to give up your bottom action because you probably want to move forward too. And if you want, if you don't need to move, then that allies probably doesn't need the move too. They're probably pretty close to you and the door at the same time. So it's a little bit weird one. Like I guess I, the only situation I see this being an attack too with something else. And that's mostly going to be it. <clears throat> Giving this to Mind Thief is in your head. More, more Mind's weakness shenanigans, sure. Yeah, definitely a lot of Mind Thief synergies. Definitely a lot of Mind Thief synergies. A lot of Mind Thief synergy, a lot of um, Scoundrel synergy. Looking pretty good. Everything synergizes with the Mind Thief though. Enemies with Retaliate don't. Got them. <laughs> <laughs> um, the bottom of this is move one all adjacent allies consider any negative and miss attack modifier cards drawn this round to be plus zero instead consume fire to get plus one instead Nah. Nah. Not about that bottom, unfortunately. Feels like a this feels like a bottom action that's really good for like two levels, then just falls off a cliff. Not feeling it. Because, like, realistically, we can give allies strengthen, right? You have abilities that give allies strengthen. Well, what's the purpose of strengthen? To stop myself from drawing misses or negative conditions. So it's kind of like a really cute way of giving somebody kind of strengthen, but not strengthen. Um, like in theory, it could be better than strengthen because of course they could draw like a minus two and a minus one or the minus two and the miss, right? Like, but I mean, it, it, sometimes you get hosed by the attack modifier deck. You get hosed by the attack modifier deck. You try and avoid it as much as possible, of course. And as soon as you start gaining levels and getting perks, this becomes irrelevant. Because hopefully most characters are starting to get rid of these and gaining in power level themselves. So, you know, the chance of them drawing negative modifiers, obviously the miss is always going to be there, but negative modifiers is going to go down. And then really it's a case of just having strength or advantage. 
It also does nothing for drawing zeros, even if you consume fire. That's a very good point, actually. That makes it significantly worse, right? Yeah, not, not about this one. The move one as well is very restrictive. Like, just move one. This couldn't be a move two. I guess we could enhance it to a move two, but that would be a poor use of your gold, I would say. If you need one guy to be dead and this guarantees it, it's fine, but that's really situational. Yeah, I suppose. The top, the top of this, the top ability on this is actually pretty strong. If if your idea here is to combo off with other characters, the top is a great combo piece. So, you know, maybe the card sort of survives because of that, and then maybe you can make some use of the bottom one time. Maybe. The annoying thing here is it doesn't apply to you either. That's why it's an X card. Yeah, I suppose. But they shouldn't be too niche. There's there's niche and then there's too niche. <laughs> and then there's also cards that just kind of completely get outclassed very quickly. And this bottom ability will get outclassed very quickly, I think. Hey, Tweeny. 36 months, dude. Holy cow. Holy cow. It's happened. Thank you so much, buddy. I really appreciate it. Three years. Thank you, man, for... Tweeny was, was my first ever subscriber. And uh, has hung around for three years. Always lurking. Always keeping me honest. I appreciate it, my man. Thank you so much. And uh, here's to many more years together, my man. I'm so... I'm just, yeah. I'm bold, I'm bold over, dude. So thank you so much. The quest continues, my friend, for many more years. Hopefully to come. And thanks for the follow, Dabba. Welcome to the quest. Appreciate it, buddy. Time flies. It really does. It really, really does. Not three years, but... <laughs> hey, still a hell of a long time, Lothor. 17 months, buddy. Thank you so much for all the support and for also making the excellent Gloomhaven digital game, buddy. And um, I think a lot of people are really enjoying that um, that mod that you did, the language mod. As we were talking about it the other day on stream on Sunday, I think. Um, yeah, I think a lot of people are, in, are using it now. <laughs> yeah, so Fiery Charisma Good top ability, but needs to combo. Bottom ability probably pretty bad, I think. Um Loyal Companion. Here's the hound then, here's the doggo. Everyone was going on about the doggo. Here he is. Here he is. Summon a spotted hound. Four health. Two move, one attack. Okay, well. It's melee. It's four health. It's move two. That's not great. All adjacent allies gain advantage. Cool. You and all allies within range two of this summon. When it is summoned, gain bless. Yeah, <laughs> boy. A little bit hmm. spicy. I mean, that's kind of cool. It's like a, ne a nice extra little effect. This is a burn, though, so it's one-time use. Um, it is gone. It's an interesting one, this one, huh? How do you keep this guy safe, chat? <laughs> crits. Definitely a mercenary's best friend. He is, but how do you protect him? 
I am very worried about this guy just running off. <laughs> running off and uh, getting himself hurt. I mean, two move isn't a, a huge amount of moves. So maybe not so bad. Wow. <laughs> The advantage and bless synergize as well with each other. Yeah, it really does. I mean, if you if you're playing the spotted hound well, do you really care about all of the like? It does put stuff like this makes it seem really useless, right? Mm -hmm. The tabletop simulator mod has a Dalmatian pick and standee. You don't know why this doesn't. Uh, it, maybe that was added after this was compiled. I mean, this particular one was compiled um, for me to be able to review these cards in like an easier format than what they were before because I think they were all jumbled up before. So it could be that that's, that is supposed to be there, but hasn't been changed on my on my file. Can you move such healing with the last card or was that allies only? I mean, he is an ally. He's an ally for you. So yeah, I mean, you could use fiery... You could command the dog with this. The dog is an ally of you. Yeah. Summons, summons our allies for you. It's If it says character, that's when it di differentiates. So, you know, usually the game will be like allies, enemies, character, or figure right so like allies would be everybody on your team but not you but everybody on your team um enemies would obviously be all of the enemies um character would be an actual player character and figure would be literally either enemy or um ally you know it could be any any kind of piece on the board really that is a Could be a summon, could be an enemy, could be a character. Yeah. <clears throat> I could keep him alive a few extra turns. You forgot the ally differential rule. It the other thing, the other thing with this guy is, I mean, like if you if you're playing on increased difficulty, he's gonna he's going to be pretty bad. If you're playing on normal difficulty, maybe plus one, you might be able to get him to work. I think the I the ideal thing to do with this guy is really try and keep him just around your allies to just give them advantage, right? In an ideal world, I would actually put a minus one advice <laughs> minus one sticker on this. <laughs> is it possible? I want to deduce it. Because you just want him to like you know, I think it would be better for him to just kinda like you play him near to an ally and he just kinda like trundles along and then maybe you use the odd ability to move him when you need to kind of keep him safe he doesn't he doesn't need to be running in there <laughs> any thoughts on what difficulty i'm starting at for cs um i'll probably end up doing like the first scenario on plus one and then see how i feel and then maybe go to plus two like i the thing with physical is that unlike in digital if we play on a really high difficulty and i fail it's like Okay, no worry. We'll just play it again, right? You hit replay and you go again. Failing in physical is always so much worse because you have to reset the entire scenario, get everything back again. So I'd much rather make solid progress. So I'd probably like start on plus one and then maybe moving up to plus two if I feel like my characters are really synergistic and you know we're, we're doing well. And then we'll go from there. <clears throat> See ya, Dabba. Thanks for stopping by, buddy, and thanks for the follow. Unfortunately, you think this ends up being blessed self and all allies within range two, and the summon itself is inconsequential. I mean, I, th I think I think the um, the advantage thing, if you can manipulate, is pretty good. I mean, here's melee, and there's going to be plenty of times where he's going to get stuck. We've just moved two; he's just going to get stuck. So maybe just having him around is going to be okay. I don't know. Like, it's kind of like having a moving, um, a moving Void Warden, um, ward, right? But it's just giving you, like, advantage, sort of. You know, that kind of, like, level of, of effect. 
I don't know. Uh, the bottom is move four, add jump if this movement begins on your ladder. Interesting. Leap from the ladder. I mean, it's a move four on 81 initiative. If you want to go late, this is a very usable thing to do. The, the add jump if this movement begins on your ladder. I'm not so sure about that. But maybe if you're sort of doing ranged attacks from your ladder somewhere, possibly. I mean, you're, you're going to play this. Like, we were thinking about playing the 77 initiative. Um, the 77 initiative move four. Will 81 initiative move four is probably even a bit better because it's a bit later. Which is really what you want to do at this point. And uh, yeah, potentially could add jump, possibly, if you're on the ladder. I think it's okay. Mm -hmm. Enhanced fire time. Yeah, exactly. Another good, another good opportunity to enhance fire, maybe. Yeah, I think like, the hound is cool. But I'm, I would be worried about it dying fairly quick. You'd have to protect it somehow. You'd have to really play your initiatives quite well. And in certain scenarios with enemies that just have retaliate or, you know, multiple targets that lay a wheeze and things like that, this guy's going to die so quick. And then it's really not going to be worth playing him because it's certainly not worth burning a card just to give everybody bless and maybe advantage one time. That's not worth it. Okay, practical tools perform one of the following abilities. Either disarm one adjacent trap or loot one. Well, I suppose we're waiting on the loot card. Here it is. At least it's not just loot. Possibly could disarm a trap as well. That card reminded you of the Mind Thieves level 1 rat. You use it for move and burn for XP at the end. Yeah, possibly. Now, this one's quite interesting. I like thematically the idea here of you kind of like going like, you know, there's a trap on the ground. And you're like, wait, everybody. There's a trap on the ground. You put your ladder over it. You kind of walk over the trap. And then you like pick your ladder up. And then you disarm the trap. And then everyone's like, okay. Everyone come along. Like, thematically, it's kind of cool to decide. Like, it's, it works really well into the theme of the character of, like, you know, protecting people, rescuing people, care, you know, caring about people, paving the path forward. Like, it thematically is a very apt ability for the character. And I think it will lead to, like, a cool, a cool couple of turns, you know, thematically. You won't be doing damage or anything, like, blowing enemies up. But in terms of, like, you know... Like, hey, everybody, make sure you go late. Don't worry about the traps. I'm going to put us through a nice little path. Perhaps you put, like, a ladder on what... If there's two traps in our line, you put your ladder on one and then you disarm the other and then you can kind of keep moving forward. I mean, that's kind of cool. And the fact you can always pick up the ladder and put it back down, like, mid-action, mid as long as it's, like, um, adjacent to you. Oh, it's... I think that... It's kind of cool. It's also, it is going to be an ability though that doesn't do absolutely anything sometimes. But loot one on the top, at least you can move into a good position to loot and then loot if you wanted to. So getting gold early, not a, not a bad card for getting gold early. Let's say most characters do want to get the gold flowing in a little bit to, to help them get some better items. And this character's definitely got some good enhancement opportunities. So it feels like loot could be quite important. Yeah, I think it's... I think this is okay. Scoundrel's like, hey, that's two cards for me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, disappointed. Scoundrel has to do this in two actions. You get it all in one, potentially. You do like that it doesn't waste two, two top actions. Yeah, sure. You could have... This could have been printed across two different cards, right? Making loot actions interesting and not completely useless <laughs> to me is is the is the trick here. Like, and they've kind of done that because they've they've made it interesting. They've they've given you a dual purpose card. Say, hey, you can loot with it, 
and maybe on the few turns where you don't need to loot with it you can find some good use of course as we all know the best way to disarm a trap though is to push an enemy into it but you know, sometimes it doesn't quite work out that way and it's it's one xp as well so in terms of leveling your character up you could do worse it's just two abilities that are sometimes necessary and can be useful and loot one is kind of looting is just part of the game and i've always i've always felt like gloomhaven has done a you know by kind of sticking red very regimented to the looting rules of you know loot gets left on the ground if you don't pick it up where a lot of like dungeon crawler games would be like maybe enemies don't drop loot but at the end of it they go hey here's all your loot in a big pile there you go i was thought that it was an interesting idea but then it means that they have to design these loot cards into it so Frosthaven's got some interesting loot cards so i'm i'm I, i'm starting to like this trend i think people are are doing a good job of trying to bucket and and actually make loot cards not just feel awful a lot of the time so the bottom is move three if you are on your ladder you may perform pull two target one figure within range three okay well there's that word figure so you could target an ally with this could also target an enemy with this so you could move forward then pull an ally like behind you who might be struggling a little bit with the movement it's a lot of flexibility there because this could just be move three you know one ally within range three gets a move two you know almost not quite but almost <clears throat> the problem is is that to get onto the ladder it's going to cost you two movement points so really maybe it's not that much really <clears throat> pull your doggo back out of danger yeah possibly yeah rescued the dog you can pull your friends into traps pull an ally everyone always mind always goes there immediately how can i grief my friends with this yes you can grief your friends with this okay Oh, right. So this is that's the last X card. Okay, so we'll be on to level two. So before we do that, let's have a look at perks. Just so that we can get an idea of like how strong we're really going to be like with the raw attacks and things. Okay. So remove two minus one cards. Okay, good, off to a good start. Replace one minus one card with one plus zero strength and ally card. Okay, well, it's plus one damage for us. And potentially, it's a strength and ally card at no range as well. So that, that's basically anywhere. You don't need line of sight, I believe. And it's just any ally, right? So very flexible. Obviously, if you're playing two player, maybe less flexible because it might not be as useful. You know, at least you can always try and direct it onto somebody if you're playing three or four. And I'm sure they'll find it useful. Um, also, if you've got your dog and you, if your dog does attack, then obviously it, that could strengthen you. And then you could then have a good attack on your turn. So it works quite well with summons onto yourself, potentially. <clears throat> um, power level of, yeah, the power level of something like that kind of varies. And we did have a lot of that. You know, we had those cards that synergize with Strengthen. If an ally is Strengthen, they get to do an attack too. So there are some synergies there that you can search for. So, um, but ultimately it is still just replacing a minus one with a plus zero, which is decent. You know, plus one damage. I've replaced two plus zero cards with two plus zero, but plus two if you are on ladder cards. Now, I like that idea. I think there should be some more of that. I've been so far, I've been underwhelmed with the kind of ladder bonuses for the most part. They've been okay, but they, you know, I don't feel like I'm like all in on ladders at this point in time. I feel like I'm more kind of like all in on allies 
than I am really all in on ladders, which is kind of weird considering that that's their core mechanic. But stuff like this is times that would make me lean a bit more towards like, okay, I need to try and be on a ladder as much as possible. Um, so it could be, it could be absolutely nothing if you're not very good with ladders. If you're always on your ladder, it's going to look great because it's a plus two damage boost. Uh, replace one plus zero with one plus one fire. As we know, fire is super important for this character. So to be honest, I think I would probably be more inclined to go for something like this than I would be for this first, even though this is replacing two cards. So potentially up to four. I still feel like getting fire is quite important. So, you know, you might even be like, I mean, if you're not on the ladder, then this thing's always going to be at least one extra damage and it makes the fire. This, of course, does replace a lot more cards, though. So. Uh, replace one plus zero card with one plus one wound card. Again, increase in damage. Wound is like an extra point of damage the turn that you play it and then could potentially be more. So this is basically like an extra two damage with this. So it's a very, it's a very efficient perk. Replace two plus one cards with one plus two fire card. Um, interesting that we're getting rid of two plus ones for only one plus two. It's obviously going to, at a certain point, we'll start to favor you into potentially drawing more damage. Um, it's pretty strong. Just trying to always get to plus two. So we, we're losing one, two. So, so far, one, two, three, four, five. So we can get rid of six cards so far out of our starting deck. Six. Two minus ones and four plus ones. Hmm. I guess the idea here being that if you were to draw... Oh, no, sorry. Uh, no, that's a replace. I so see. I guess the idea here is to try and draw just plus two or better because of course this could be plus two as well kind of interesting idea this modified deck looks stacked it definitely looks like we can hopefully at higher levels be drawing plus two pretty reliably and often right add one plus one strength and ally card so same as this except that was replace um i, I prefer the replace of course over this I add two rolling heal one range one cards. <sighs> I mean, it's it's rolling. It doesn't add anything to your deck, really. You're playing with the new ambiguity rules. Should be fine. Add two rolling wounds. Now, I like that more. Ignore negative item effects and add one rolling fire. Very good. Ignore negative scenario effects and add one rolling fire. Very good. Okay. So you're probably... Yep. Yeah, yeah, you're definitely going to want these two. And, it, and we can wear armor. Which as a character who's kind of a bit of a, a melee ranged hybrid. Who sometimes will get into danger. We haven't seen any kind of tanking cards. No cards that mitigate damage in any way. Uh, we've seen a couple of heals. But nothing that would really in, indicate that we're supposed to be like... You know, retaliate or shield or anything like that. So, but wearing, wearing armor is just sometimes a nice added bonus just to make you a little bit safer. Like, you know, characters like Lightning Bolt, not a character that really is a tank. I mean, you can play like some weird retaliate builds, but not really a tank. But it just helps us stay in the fight a little bit longer just to kind of mitigate the damage a little bit. You can just tough it out a little bit longer because of those items. So, and a rolling fire is definitely something you want. <clears throat> it's not a tank but for rescuing but for rescuing melee character armor is thematic it's thematic but also required i think like if you're a character who's a little bit more of a melee based character i feel like unless you have evasion so you know invisibility really good initiatives like so you know early late early late all the time um or you have like give enemy disadvantage on their attacks or you have um 
like a bunch of push or something like that or a mobilize right this character's had no control ability so far like none so rating zero on control right now um no tanking abilities some good ally kind of buffing abilities a little bit of heal um some fairly flexible heals actually and um some mixed damage types melee and ranged so you know they're not they do need i think they would need something if they're not going to have shield if they're not going to have retali not, well, not retaliate if they're not gonna have shield on their cards if they're not gonna have invisibility on their cards they need some way of staying alive because yes being on your ladder or your ladder can obviously make things a little bit difficult like actually make it difficult terrain it um you're not safe while on the ladder <clears throat> Did I say what three I'm leaving behind at level one? Um, I can do. Yeah. So all in all, perks, pretty damn good. Like this character should should be drawing damage. Decent amounts of damage. Obviously leaning, hopefully, to being on your ladder. I think that that's where you really want to be. Um, but you've got some fairly decent early perks just to kind of get yourself up and running. Fire is going to be so important on this character. So... I mean, unless we find another card or you have a load of gold to enhance, like maybe you want to prioritize some of these fire things. Possibly, but we'll see. The problem with like elemental flips I've always found is that sometimes they're nice, but sometimes they come back to, to burn you because you know, the enemy will use them or potentially you're, you, know, you don't have the card in your hand that would use the fire anyway. Like you just don't draw them at the right time. So... They're a little bit unreliable. So cards that I would leave behind. We got we got 10 cards, right? Um I'd probably say coordinated attack. Wouldn't be taking that. Probably not combat medic. And probably not practical tools either. Just because I don't play loot cards. Like, I just don't. Out of principle. <laughs> Out of principle, I don't play them. <clears throat> Look at this attack mark. That makes you wish for more attack actions. Yeah. Got some good potential. So basically get rid of anything that doesn't have the word attack written on it. <laughs> or in a good way. I just feel like this this card's a bit... If you, were, if you were playing into this really well, then obviously you would play this, I think. This is the one that I'm the most unsure about out of that lot, I'd say. Okay. Level two. Heavy irons. So attack three, immobilize. Add plus one attack and gain one XP if you are adjacent to an ally. Well, there's some straight up. We were just saying we had no control. There's some control right away. Potentially an attack four with a mobilized melee attack. Decent. Very decent. We'll take that. Definitely. Any day of the week. Late initiative on 79 makes this actually probably more favorable for this kind of thing because you probably want to go in late and immobilize then on your next turn you want to go early and run away so the enemy's already taking their turn that round so you immobilize them for the next round probably the better way of playing because if you went super early with this i guess you could immobilize them and run away but then of course you're going to have to play a decent move ability on low initiative and i think like what do we have like we had like the 12 but the 12 was more for the top yeah like you're probably gonna find yourself doing something like this and using this as a default move too which is you know it's doable but probably not really how you want to be playing um so yeah as far as abilities go pretty vanilla but strong vanilla you know like you can expect this to be good you, to be honest even it just attack three immobilized it's pretty usable 
if if you can control an enemy with it if not you know, if you were against all ranged enemies too bad <laughs> well you could immobilize them i suppose to give them disadvantage that would be the best best use of that uh, the bottom is add plus one attack and wound to your next melee attack this round i mean wound is great it's an extra one it's an extra one damage as we said before so this is kind of like a plus two with possible upside for more of course the downside of being if they're already wounded then you know you don't stack wounds so maybe not quite so good hmm i think that's that's just that's just fine right and if we were to play a good early attack I guess if we were actually... Oh, it's melee attack. Oh, that's a bit awkward. I was going to say, like, we could potentially play with one of our ladder abilities, but most of them are ranged. Or will, will be ranged. Hmm. I guess it works kind of okay with this. 30. No, oh, this card's a bit mare anyway. This one, was, this, one was, this one was another one, actually, which is probably quite close to the cut. Hmm. Uh, I don't really know how I'm going to be playing the bottom of that card yet. Hmm. Yeah, I don't really know how I would play that. The, the weird thing about this card is that it's like not allies like all of our other buffs have been like you or an ally which has been like super useful a bit weird that this one is specifically us right low is its usefulness for sure hmm strong top ability bottom ability i think is we're we're looking for like a more clear thing to combo it with obviously this with the top of this would be great but we can't do that Right, so the other level two is Trauma Care. Heal four, range one. That's a really good amount of heal. Add plus one heal and gain one if the target has wound. That's kind of nice. Add plus one range if you're on your ladder. So this could be a heal two. Heal, heal two. Sorry, range two, heal five, possibly. In terms of reusable heals, that's pretty much as good as it comes. Without any significant downside, you know. The only other card I'm thinking about here is Taunting Fate on Void Warden, which is a heal six. But you have to add a Bless into the enemy's deck, which you can counteract, of course, with Iron Helmet. But it is a kind of very real drawback where possibly it could come back to bite you. you know, this could be a heal five with no downside, really. Seems good, but a maybe a little bit disappointing. Like not the direction I want to go with this character. I don't. I don't know. Hmm. Very good heal though. Very very good heal. Thirty one initiative. Decent initiative as well. Um, not an outstanding, but kind of fine. Move two. Add plus one move if this movement begins on your ladder. Okay. Then heal two range one. Now that is that is much better much much better always been very playable this kind of thing move and a little bit of heal inconsequential heal that's not taking up your entire turn is excellent really good if we're moving three healing ourselves to remove a wound or a poison or just top ourselves up a little bit because we took one attack earlier in the round or whatever that's really good value because you're just kind of you are kind of getting two actions in one a lot of the time and that's where that for me is where heal really starts to come alive that's where it gets really good is when you're not spending your entire turn to heal up you are moving and healing and continuing on with the scenario pushing on right and that's um absolutely something that you could do here i like it difficult decision about the two of these though 
So is ladder all about small buffs? Small buffs and some sort of like... It's, it's small buffs, but also affecting the environment in small ways. And also changing some of your attacks from melee to range, which you may not want to do sometimes, right? Because you might be like not able to get the disadvantage. <clears throat> it's kind of a difficult one to choose between here, I would say. I mean, Heavy Irons is probably the... Like, if in doubt, take the attack card, I guess. If in doubt, take the attack card. It's a little bit disappointing, Ellie. Yeah. In terms of enhancement opportunities as well, I mean, I guess this is probably the better enhancement opportunity. I mean, a 31 initiative move 3 with heal 2. I mean, that's really quite good. Like... That's the kind of ability that I would play all the way up to level 9. This... Might not be. Hmm. This, this is the kind of ability that I would... If I enhance this up to like a move 3, then... I mean, I'm playing this until level 9, right? You'd go for the attack as he lacks it? Possibly. You are right. There is a lot of stuff going on there there's a lot of like buffs going on with some of your turns feeling maybe like you don't really do anything except buff an ally possibly hey Vazant, thank you so much for subscribing i really appreciate it for using your amazon prime sub here buddy thank you so much welcome to the adventure pie my friend good to have you here i really appreciate it hope you're having a um excellent day Do we need more bottoms or tops? I feel like that's... That can be a good way. And this is... We've, we've talked about this concept many a time. And I feel like this is actually... They, they haven't fallen into that trap here. Close to falling into that trap. But they didn't fall into this trap. Um, where if there's too clear a choice, people will just do it. Right? If there's far too clear a choice... Then people will just do it. And then you've already kind of started to lock in your build from level two. Because you've kind of gone, well, that one's definitely the better action. So I'll take that. And in a similar way, you could maybe look at like, are we lacking tops or are we lacking bottoms? And if you look at it that way, then maybe you just sort of go, well, we're, we've got loads of great bottoms. So we're going to take this. But then perhaps, you know, the next three cards we take from level three onwards are top, top, top. Because it's just clear choice, right? So then we're like, oh, actually, we're now overloaded on tops. I wish we had a more usable bottom move action. And here it was at level two and we didn't take it, right? So I think you can you can definitely consider that stuff. But when you do, you could almost like start to lock yourself into a way of playing before you've even really started playing, right? Um, which is why I really dislike it when at level two, if there's two builds for a character at level two, they give you one amazing card for one build. And the other card doesn't really do much for the other build. Like it doesn't, it doesn't really, like it's maybe a bit of an improvement, but it doesn't really. So then immediately you're like, I'm taking the card that's really good. And that makes that build really good. And then suddenly you just disregard all of the cards for the other build from now on, as you level up from one, because you've already got that sunk cost fallacy of we're doing this build from level two. And, you know, that's, I think, the awkward part. And the counterpoint to that would be, if you come at high prosperity, your character comes in at a higher level, then you can maybe make better choices because you come in at a higher level, you can make these choices. But I don't know how many people really do that. Like, and how, like, especially like something like Crimson Scales, where it doesn't really have retirement, it exists, but it's not like a huge deal, not a big part of the game. I don't know. A dangerous master as well. Thank you so much for the Prime Gaming sub. Thank you both for you guys for using your uh, Amazon Prime gaming sub. For those who don't know, if you have Amazon Prime, you get a free subscription to use on Twitch every month, which you can use to support a streamer, any streamer, not just me, but 
use it wherever you like please use it because it's just wasted money otherwise so just give it to somebody you don't care who because it takes it out of jeff's pocket <laughs> jeff bezos pocket and puts it into a streamer's pocket which is very cool so thank you so much dangerous master welcome to the adventure party buddy i appreciate it very much hope you're doing awesome are we taking heal cards i i mean it's i'm very close to saying yes <laughs> because i don't really like the top hugely i think it's a good value heal but this to me just seems like a very efficient action very efficient especially if we want to get more attacks and we want to get more melee focus later on whereas this is just like an attack four with a mobilize we know that's good we know that works the raw numbers are good you know it passes the it passes the smell test if you like the Gloomhaven, right? Uh, if there was an enhancement dot here, I think I would be all in. Like, I'd say, yeah, we'll get strengthened. We're done, right? <laughs> Heavy iron sounds boring. It is... I feel like this makes it a little bit more interesting, the fact that there's some synergy there. But yeah, I mean, attack three and mobilize. It's not a hugely interesting. And like we said before, like like I said, I can see myself playing this card all the way up to level nine, enhancing it and being really happy with it. Whereas this, I could see myself getting to like top levels and being like, well, the initiative isn't great and it doesn't really like, you know, it's... I, I can just see myself dropping this card at some point, possibly. Whereas this, I I think I would struggle to, to drop a card that just is an efficient move with a heal on the bomb. I think I'm going to take Trauma Care. Shock. Absolute shock. But maybe we'll end up going a different direction here. But we didn't have any control to begin with, so how about we just go no control? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Uh, ladder Assault. <gasps> we throw in ladders at people. Attack 3, push 2. If you push the target into the hex containing your ladder, the target suffers 2 damage and you get 1 XP. Okay. I mean, that's pretty decent. Attack 3, plus 2 true damage. You know, so we're looking at 5 damage here. Is it... You can push them through it too, right? It says if you push the target into the hex containing your ladder. So it just... Yeah, you don't have... They don't have to end their turn in the hex with the ladder. You can push them through the ladder. They're going to take two damage. You're going to gain one XP. That's a pretty useful, like, attack. My only worry with that is positioning of the ladder, right? Maybe a bit more tricky. <laughs> no, that's a lot of damage. That's a lot of damage. Heaving swing was good. Heaving swing was good, but heaving swing. <clears throat> well, I was going to say heaving swing was easier to use, but maybe that's not so true. I mean, your ladder you can always place down as long as it's legal, right? And your ladder's like a little mini trap. And the fact that you could move... So in, in theory, right? So let's say you had... Let's go to a, a cart. I can illustrate this on a card. Let's say, let's say you're here... And the enemy is like here. You could use your bot. You could like use your bottom move action to kind of like go, like move here, drop the ladder here, then move around and then push right, because you can drop the ladder off at any point. So there should really be a way. But you're gonna have to like put it behind them and then come back in front of them or come to the side of them at least 
So they could be here. You could be here. You could go move here. Place the ladder here. Move back. So it'd be like a move two. Move one here. Place ladder. Move two here. Push. That would work. So you could use it with a default action. It wouldn't be that hard to do. But obviously you'd have... This would have to be a legitimate hex for the ladder. That's the trick. <clears throat> it's a bit awkward as you would need to use an action to set this up and another one to go pick it up. Well, the fact that you can pick it up as you move around, you might just, um, you know, you just might just have to direct your movement, right? So in that situation... It would be, so let's say we want to place the ladder here. So we move one, place the ladder, move two. Then we push him through. So this guy is now like, so he's pushed once, twice. So he's now pushed through the ladder. So on the next turn, we can go one, two. Well, we'd have to be one, two, three, because it's the ladder. It's an extra move. But we're now on the ladder and we now get extra bonuses, right? So I don't know. You could just play around the ladder a lot more. Because you don't always want to pick up the ladder. You could just then, you know, start playing your turn around it. I don't know. It's one of those ones where I'm not so sure how it would be until I play with it. Until I really see how many times I can get the ladder out, I... It's hard to say. It's hard to say. If you were on the ladder and have an enemy adjacent, only need move two. Yeah. <clears throat> I think it's going to be fairly easy, except maybe in the odd scenario where it's really hard because there's just nothing around, right? Uh, 68 initiative. The bottom is move three. This movement is unaffected by difficult and hazardous terrain. Nice. So easy to get onto the ladder. Add plus two move and jump if this movement begins on your ladder. Nice. Well, jump kind of makes it irrelevant. So it's really good at moving on and off the ladder. So Ladder Assault definitely is a good name of this card. It's it's all about the ladder. Move on to the ladder easily. Get a big bonus for moving off the ladder. That's a move five non-burn with jump potentially. That's really good. And then you've got a really solid attack on the top. I mean, I like this card. It's a good. It's two good abilities back to back neither of them like super amazing maybe but well i mean i guess move five is pretty damn good <laughs> but you know what i mean like they're both like just really solid which means you're going to be flexible which i usually appreciate like i like cards where i can look at them and go ah yeah i could use it for the top or the bottom i don't you know the, the card isn't pigeonholed into yeah i always play it for the top and then occasionally i might play it for the bottom very very rarely or eventually i burn it for the top but I use it for the bottom every time. I like cards where, you know, one round I might use it for the top, another round I might use it for the bottom, and then I might switch it up again, you know? It's going to be, it's going to be a card that you probably don't want to lose to a long rest or a short rest because it's always going to be useful in some way, right? Move five, jump onto the ladder again. Now we're talking. Yeah, because you could... Essentially, what you could do is if you started on the ladder, you know, you move one hex off the ladder, you pick the ladder up, and then you just continue on, right? And then when you get to the one... Then once you've got... You've done your move four, you put the ladder in front of you, jump onto the ladder. Really good way of keeping the ladder moving with you. Keep your friends close and your ladder closer, yeah. <laughs> you wonder this guy will feel uh, like the opposite of the hatchet. All the enemies are too close to you and they keep getting in the way of you retrieving your ladder. Well, yes and no. So because the ladder is considered to be difficult terrain. Well, I guess you, you wouldn't be able to pick it up, right? Well, if you have jump though, that's fine because jump would allow you to still pick up the ladder. Because if if let's say, let's say in this example here, let's go back to our old friend Firewell, right? Let's say you're here on your ladder, and let's say you are completely surrounded by enemies, right? Now you can't remove the ladder while you're on it; it's not allowed. But in theory, you could go move one. You got jump, then you could remove the ladder while you're kind of jumping, you know. Because you can do it at any point during your movement action. At any point. Halfway through your move action, whenever you like. 
So, in theory, you could just go here, pick up the ladder, and you're away. And because this is difficult terrain, enemies are always going to avoid going onto your ladder if they can. Occasionally, they might wander onto it if there was nowhere else to go. But your spot with the ladder on it should be free a lot of the time. Especially if you've used it on, like, an obstacle or something like that. Um, well, actually, no, it's the same difference if you use it on an obstacle. Because it just makes it difficult. But, yeah. Same point. It's like, the, the enemies aren't going to focus walking through it if they can avoid it. <clears throat> so he does parkour as well. Apparently, like, he can, like, pogo on this ladder or something. I don't know. <laughs> If you start on the ladder, you can pick it up in midair, like some sort of somersaulting hooligan. Yeah. There is like a... There's like like circus ladder axe, right? I've seen them before. Circus ladder act. This guy. Right? This is the fire knight. Literally what you're doing. Skill, the balance. See, look, this, he's obviously got like the level. It's clearly like a level eight or nine. There you go, the pogo. Yeah, boy. That's what it is the pogo. Spicy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's got a level eight ladder, right? Clearly, there's a there's a ladder that doesn't require uh, any kind of terrain. <laughs> I still want to see this guy like jump on it, like. Whoa, there it is. The dismount. That, like, this is it. <laughs> oh, he's got, he's got like a bigger hole there. He, he's going to move through that. He's got to. <laughs> That's the extra move if we're starting on the ladder. Yeah. He's, this is all based on real life. You know? Oh, what, what is this? What are those? Oh, he's got the level 9. He's got the level 9 uh, supports. <laughs> it's the ranged attack. Is he going to do... No. Is he going to do a handstand on it? A personal item. <laughs> That's a solo scenario item. And this is why the enemies can't get you. Right? Is he also juggling? <laughs> there it is. <laughs> That's the impressive part of it. <laughs> I 
How much XP did he earn? All the XP. He just went straight to max level. That was... He went from level 1 to level 9 in... What was that? Two minutes? It was pretty impressive. <laughs> now I need to redo the other CS classes to find real world examples of their mechanics. Oh god, please no. Right, where were we? <laughs> uh, ladder Assault. Yeah, anyway, so that's Ladder Assault. <laughs> right, Crew Integrity. Attack 3, range 3. Gain advantage and 1 XP if you are on your ladder. Strengthen all allies adjacent to the target. Okay. Well, that's a little bit more, like, reliable, right? That's quite reliable. Doesn't require too much setup, hopefully. We're going to throw those juggling uh, discs. <laughs> the strength on all allies thing is like a nice little sort of bonus. 20 initiative too, so pretty good. Pretty good initiative. I like this one. Do I like it more than the other one, though? Hmm. I mean, this feels like a bit more rewarding, but... The thing is, though, is that if you're going for these perks, right? Don't you just always want to be on your ladder? And this is like, I'm not on the ladder. So then, inevitably, Gloomhaven will always make you draw the attack modifier you don't want. So, we'll just keep drawing these when we're trying to do this push action. God damn it. You know? Level 3 and still no reliable fire generation? Not ideal. That's a fair point. We haven't had that yet. I feel like that just means that the enhancements are so important. Attack 3 with advantage sounds good. Yeah. So the bottom is move 1, consume fire to get additional plus 2 move. So move 3, 1 XP. You and one adjacent ally may perform move two. I mean, that's a pretty decent move. Although I now feel like we're getting to that point where we've got our moves, you know? I mean, we had we took a good move at level two. Are we consuming fire for this? Probably not. I mean, not where we stand right now. We've got so many better um, consumptions of fire that I don't feel like we're going to be doing that. So really, the bottom half of this card is pretty pretty meh really we've already taken you know a, a pretty decent move and this could be a great move too interesting one i think like this is the battle of the top abilities here battle of the top abilities <clears throat> mm-hmm Yeah, not the best way to use fire. No, not the best way to use fire. So do we want to stay on our ladder as much as possible? Or do we want to push enemies onto our ladder? This is good, reliable damage. Goes through shield. Could also just use it to push an enemy onto a trap if we... You know, the worst case scenario of this is you just run up to an enemy and push him through a trap, right? There's plenty of other ways to get two damage or more with a push two ability. You know, in fact, you could actually argue that two damage on a push two ability is pretty underwhelming. <laughs> you know? Like, actually, no, I want to be doing like six or eight with a trap. and Or I want to push them into hazardous terrain, which is, um, well, probably two damage as well. So, you could make a strong argument here that, well, actually, is this just really cute? 
and practice and when you actually are playing are you actually ever going to play this like this or are you just going to look for interesting opportunities to put enemies through traps <clears throat> crew sounds more reliable yeah i think i'm leaning towards crew although i feel like the ladder assault has probably the better mix of two abilities but if we're looking right now, like we're saying that we've already secured a couple of good moves, you know, now maybe at level three. I know I just said literally don't let that always steer your judgment because it's always it could lead you down the wrong way. But if if we want to go down the strategy of we're on a ladder and our perks are we're on a ladder, I felt like we should go for the card that wants us to be on our ladder. All right. <laughs> The main point is traps don't always exist. You'll do it when traps aren't there. Yeah, but... I guess, but... Like, you have to set it up. Like, the ladder has to be placeable. The, I guess the cool thing you could do is you could, in theory put the trap put the ladder on a trap push the enemy through the ladder which has the trap underneath it they take two damage from the ladder then you remove the ladder and then there's a trap between you and the enemy and then you play like some kind of pull or you force the enemy to go through the trap i guess there is some very cute things you can do because of the way that ladders work This push affects flying enemies. Traps don't. That's true. That's fair. Yeah, would be quite good against living spirits. For sure. Forest imps. It's a tough one. I think they're very close, to be honest. Really quite close. But I think if, if the plan is to get these perks... I feel like we have to go for crew integrity. Plus, the 20 initiative is is pretty good. And for us, we haven't... Well, we had like a 12. Um, 22. Didn't we have like a 19 or something as well? 19. So like 15. So we got like a couple of... Early-ish initiatives. Hmm. I don't know. I feel like that's... It's so super close. I, I'll probably go Crew Integrity because it just feels like it's a bit easier to use, maybe. And also plays into the strategy of of this. But honestly, I feel like you could probably go either way. <clears throat> like, it feels like you could go either way with that... With, with those two cards, really. <clears throat> feels like a card that you pull off once early on and then you keep trying to replicate it and never can yeah like i said before flexibility i really value it and you know this is a very flexible card though you know it's got a really good move on the bottom maybe the top attack like i guess if we're looking for something that we can play like a reliable attack we can play every single round and be really happy about it i mean you you're probably not going to get much better than crew integrity why not it's so close between these two, honestly. Very, very close. Um, right, level four, Jack of all trades. If you are on your ladder, you may perform heal to self. Okay, then we do attack three wound. Consume fire to add to minus one attack, but target three things instead. And they're all melee attacks. Hmm. I don't know about this ability, chat. I, there's something off about this, and I can't really put my finger on it. There's something that I'm just not jiving with here. 
I think it might just be the fact that it's a melee attack when all of the other ladder abilities have been like gain ranged. Like a level four card that's just attack three wound is... Obviously, if you can attack three things, then that's great. But how often is that going to happen? And what situation have you put yourself in to be dealing with that? Wounding three enemies sounds nice, but you're on your ladder in the heat of the battle. Yeah. I guess the thing is that eventually you should be really just running around with your ladder. To be honest, maybe that's why you should you should take ladder assault because maybe this just makes it so much easier to just land things like this all the time. Like maybe the whole idea of just you're always on your ladder but you're constantly moving with it all the time is really where it's at. You finish the charges of the level one card. True, you've got those buffs that you can put with this, yeah. You can go late than early, not that bad. Yeah, maybe. I don't know, there's just something about this card that I just... It feels... It just feels a bit awkward to me. Another fire consumption as well. Mm, not, not, I, I don't know. Like, it's obviously pretty good if you can get it off, but I don't know. There's just something about it that I'm just not jiving with. But why no fire week? Yeah, the fire, the, the lack of fire generation. I get what they've gone for here. And I think it's probably pretty clever, really. Making it so that your, your fire consumes are strong, but you can't really do it. Like this is a character that really thrives in teamwork. Really thrives in a team environment. If you have another character who can make you fire just randomly all the time, like you're playing with a bolt, a demolitionist. Um, Spellweaver. Triangles. You're playing with any of these characters that can just make elements just whenever, all the time. There's just flowing and that fire is just flowing. Then, I mean, <laughs> you're going to be doing, you're going to feel so powerful on this character. And I guess that's kind of quite unique. On its own, you'd look at it and be like, yeah, it's powerful, but it's maybe not like crazy. But with a couple of other little, with a couple of characters that it's paired with, with both its ally buffing abilities and the fact that it can really benefit from fire itself, like there'll be a couple of pairings this character will go in and it will just be insane. <clears throat> Only extinguish fire. I mean, that's fair. Thematically... Maybe they don't really want fire, but they're supposed to be also kind of like a bit of a pyromancer, aren't they? It's because the first action listed is heal. If it said attack first, you wouldn't mind it so much. Maybe that's it. Yeah, maybe it should have said attack three, wound, target three, and then heal to self at the bottom. True. Yeah, you could you could be right there. The 27 initiative perform any two of the following abilities in any order. Attack 2, range 2. Wound, range 2. Move 2, loot 1. Well, I mean, that is sensational, though. That is really good. That's really good. So much flexibility on one card. In one ability. I mean, it's going to be... It's going to probably be attack 2... Range to with probably move to as well, most likely. I feel like that this side is what it's probably going to be. But 
But then I can also see a situation where you probably just do this and this. And I guess you could even just do this and this, maybe. It's really, really flexible, like super flexible, like... And with a decent card, mo two movement is enough to get you onto a ladder as well, right? You put the ladder in front of you or to the side or wherever, you can just move straight onto the ladder. So, you know, it, two movement is important. I think that's another reason why I didn't like this move one. Thinking about it now. Because, mm. actually, maybe we should just, yeah. Maybe we should have gone for the other card. Because realistically, this move one is actually trash. Because it, you can't even get onto the ladder with it. Loving this bottom? Yeah, I think so. I think this is really strong. Let's see what the other level 4 is, but this is just incredibly strong. And we have, like, top buffs and things like that, so we can take advantage of these sorts of things. It is move 3, right? What? On this. Now this is... Yeah, I mean... Oh, yeah, sorry. Right, move one with it. Sorry, yeah, you're right. This is you and one. Sorry. Yeah, you're right. You get to move one, then you do a move two separately. Yeah, sure. Sorry, yeah. So, for some reason, I, I only read that as one adjacent ally. I didn't read the you bit. Yeah, you're right. Okay, what's the other level for? Because so that's... This card's like just... It is the Jack of All Trades. Exact great name for the card. Exactly what it does. A Kindle Tonic. Heal 3, range 2, target 2. Alright, I'm out. <laughs> Alright, no good. Uh, <laughs> no, to be fair, they, it's, it's 6 heal across 2 targets. That's pretty good. You may forgo your bottom action and add bless and gain one. Okay. Uh, probably not going to do that too often. All figures who remove a negative condition with this heal gain strengthen. Okay. So a bit of synergy with that too. From previous things. Um... <clears throat> so as this heal joke has passed its prime. I still find it funny. <laughs> That's all that matters. <sighs> uh, so, yeah, I mean, like, we're on. We'll be on to like a potentially could be six heal across two different targets. Uh, you can target yourself with this, which is kind of interesting to bless yourself. Um, you could also give yourself strengthen with this, and you do have some, you know, bottom attacks. So. In theory, you could kind of make some good use out of Strengthen across two turns. So, this actually has some quite good synergy with, with just you as well. Giving up your bottom action to give Bless is probably not going to... Probably not going to happen that much, to be honest. But maybe towards the end of a room, it's possible. Like, if, you, if your whole turn is... Heal three, range two, target two, nothing else with bless. Like, I, 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 I mean, I guess it's fine, like for a throwaway turn, but not super good. Is bless two a good bottom action? Yeah, if your bottom a bit uh, action just said bless target two, range two. I mean, probably not. I mean, most of the most of the blessed type abilities that I've played, that I have played with before, and ones that I've avoided, is I've generally avoided a lot of the just the kind of stationary all adjacent allies gain a bless type abilities. I generally avoid those a lot of the time. There's only a couple of characters that I do play them with. Um, 
Music Note has one that's pretty good, but that's because Music Note often doesn't really want to move and her top actions are just make us, you know, play a song. I don't know, as a, as a character who's probably going to want to run, run around quite a lot because of where your ladder is and, and picking your ladder up and moving your ladder, you know, pretty continuously. You know, can you give up a bottom action to not move? I don't know. If you're already on your ladder, maybe. Maybe. I think it's pretty cool. And this is the blesses on range two. Yeah. So the bottom is move four. Remove all negative conditions from all adjacent allies. If you remove at least one negative condition, gain one XP. Consume fire to strengthen and affect all adjacent allies. A pretty similar kind of thing. Not a great use of fire, I would say, compared to some of the other ones we've seen. But, I mean, it's an, it's an average use of fire. Like, if we had fire everywhere all the time, then, yeah, this would be fine. Like, on any other class that was making fire all the time, this would be fine. But if we're not doing that... Very nice, very nice effect, though. Hmm. I think it's got to be Jack of All Trades. I mean, Jack of All Trades, this bottom ability is so useful. And, you know, even, even this, this is actually... You do it at a good time, this is going to work out well. I think this is okay. <clears throat> hey, Einst. Random question. Can you buy Jaws Line Digital by itself? Or do you have to buy Gloomhaven, then Jaws Line? You have to buy both of them. Because it's a DLC to, um, to Digital Gloomhaven. So, yeah. It doesn't work without the other one, unfortunately. Jack of all trades is juicy. Yes, I agree, Nitz. I think Jack of all trades is the card that I'm going for because it just, like, having this much flexibility is just going to give you a lot of play, like just a lot of things you can do, and you're going to feel, you're going to feel strong. Always going to be able to move. And twenty seven initiative is is okay. It's okay. When you enhance the top of Jack of All Trades, it is a multi-target or not? Um, it is not a multi-target. <clears throat> You're wondering if they took fire generation off several cards during playtesting because he was too powerful. Um... I guess that, that's plausible, for sure. But also I can see that because this character is very synergistic with certain parties and, you know, it wants allies, it wants to work with allies, perhaps they also just thought it would be kind of cool to have a very collaborative effort. Because, like, most characters, when they use elements, are self-sufficient. Like, most of them are. Like, you know, you go through periods maybe where it's harder or easier to have your elements. But when you look at all of the characters that are kind of element hungry for a lot of their good abilities, they will get to a point where they can generate them in a pretty decent fashion. And this character feels like, so far, they haven't really done that. Maybe purposefully, but also maybe to push you towards enhancement decisions. I don't know. It's an interesting idea. Like, it's a collaborative character. It would do very well with certain characters that make fire. So that's an avenue. Has enhancement possibilities for fire. That's an avenue. So Yeah, maybe 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 that was the angle. <clears throat> you mean the attack since the target three requires fire? Yes. No, um this because this is an added effect, it doesn't get counted inside the enhancement costs. This is why, um, <clears throat> this is why, um, oh, help me out. What's the triangles card? Shaping the ether. This is why shaping the ether 
because you have to consume earth to make it a target too so add the stun that's why the enhancement costs for that card is so low because you have to consume the element to make it a target too it's not innate target too does that make sense so if you have to consume an element to add target that gets around the enhancement cost that would come with a multi-target ability so yeah, if you want like a real world example, just go look at Shaping the Ether. Um, I think we're taking Jack of all traits. Uh, okay, level five, hook and ladder. Attack three, range two, and pull two or pierce two and gain one XP if you are on the ladder. Hello. Hello. Strength and effect all eyes. I mean, it is only... I mean, the PS2 is nice, though. Kind of keeps the card... Makes the card, uh, you know, pretty, like, reliable at this level. <clears throat> are we allowed to enhance here with strengthen and crimson you think so yeah yes but you're probably fairly unlikely to see it on like bottom abilities you'll see it here right but you won't see for example for example People have learned. <laughs> the cat's out of the bag on that one. Could you pierce something and pull another? That's a good question. Yeah, are we choosing pull two for the entire attack action or are we choosing pierce two for the entire attack action? That is a good question. All them in, then Ring of Brutality into Jack of All Trades. Well, yeah. We need fire, though. Need me some fire. If we can choose, that's some flexibility. If it's an entire attack action, we have to decide if it's pull two or PS2. Slightly worse. There's only range two as well, but I guess with a pattern like this, that might not matter so much. This whole strength and effect of allies in the targeted area, I mean, you don't really care. I'll be honest. I'd rather hit three enemies. Each attack should be done independently, in your opinion. As, as per, like, regular kind of Gloomhaven rules, yeah, I would tend to agree with you. Been playing digital for so long, though, that this would all resolve as one one thing on digital, you know? One of the downsides to something like this is it wouldn't work in digital. If that was the, the way it's supposed to be. Yeah, I, I this this top... Actually, I was... Initially, I was like, yeah, this seems really good. But... Um, I mean, it's potentially 9 damage with PS2... It's not the hardest pattern in the world to hit, but it's probably not the easiest either. It's not like it's going to happen every single time. I've always considered the easiest pattern to always be the three, the triangle. This would be close to that, but not quite. Range two sounds weird. Yeah, this is a little bit like that, um, that high level spell weaver card. You know, the one that's just like a straight line. It's like that. You decide when you start the action, you think. Yes, you do. So realistically, this could be like range two. This could be three. This could be four. So realistically, you could hit something four away. Because you start here at range two. That makes sense? 
Similar to like how you can angle larger AoEs with that range too. Mm -hmm. Non-burn. It is a non-burn. Maybe a pretty reliable attack non-burn. Okay, 32 initiative. All allies adjacent to you while you are on your ladder gain advantage on all their attacks and may remove strength and to add plus one attack to their first attack each round. A what? Okay, so the idea here is that they're gaining advantage from the ladder. So they don't need to strengthen. So they can remove the strengthen to get plus one attack. That's the idea. That's a, it's kind of a hard one to judge, this one, huh? I don't know. I'm, uh, it's, a, it's a hard one to judge. They can basically double advantage by consuming strength. And yeah, granted the advantage gives you additional plus one damage on average. I mean, at level five, you're, you know, you, hopefully you've all started to start start to get pretty, pretty decent decks now. Your perks should be coming along nicely. Hmm. It's like a, it's, it's like the other one that we had. A little kind of strange. How often are we strengthening our allies? See, my problem with the strengthening thing is that there's only been a couple of abilities where I've been like, yeah, cool, we will be strengthening. A lot of the other ones I'm like, well, maybe we might strengthen them. <clears> hmm. <throat> Let's look at the other card. This one's throwing me a little bit. This bottom. Not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not convinced on it, but I'm not discounting it. Attack 2, range 2, wound. Add plus 1 range or advantage and gain 1 XP if you are on your ladder. Okay, so there you go. That's the one that I was kind of thinking. Like I was saying, this is the easiest pattern. But attack 3 with PS2 versus attack 2, wound, range 1 and advantage. And it creates fire. Oh, it's the easy pick. Done. <laughs> Fire is here. <laughs> you do feel the easier pattern should have gone to the previous level fire. I mean, yeah, if the intent if 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 everybody knows they need fire, then absolutely. Like if, if fire is like the, the buzz. Like, you know, the, the one thing we've been looking out for every single level up is where can we get reliable fire? Well, here it is. And it's on a pretty easy to hit attack. It's actually on a pretty good attack too. I mean, attack two, range three with wounded advantage. If we're on our ladder, you know, that could end up being a pretty, a pretty decent little attack. You know, this is, this is a non-burn version of something like um, you know, net shooter or or any of those kind of things. I mean, it's 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 chromatic explosion for us, right? It is our chromatic explosion, basically. <laughs> Makes what we want. never like bluntly using this one is reasonable to just fire yeah i mean fire is really what we're looking for right monochromatic explosion yeah <laughs> yeah i guess it kind of is you do think the level fives are surprisingly close in power but you didn't pick the not the fire knight yeah yeah in terms of power level I mean, attack three with PS2 
is very close to attack to wound advantage, right? If you were hitting all three targets with both. You know, this is going to be better. So it, I guess the thing is, though, is that wound is good against enemies with shield as well. Yeah, I mean, this is a pretty easy choice, I think. What's the bottom of this? Add plus one attack and gain advantage on your first attack each round, targeting an enemy with wound. Once per turn, you may consume fire to add wounds to one of your attacks. I mean, that's kind of cool, too. That's actually really cool. Yeah, Searing Blaze, this is the whole package. I really like the fact that it's just maybe when we get to a higher level or maybe if you're in a party where fire has just been abundant anyway, you could just use the bomb of this for like a fun passive ability and just... You'll, be, you'll, you'll do some really serious damage. Getting to add wounds whenever you feel like it. Getting that plus one and advantage on your first attack each round. You'll become very, very efficient at, like, focusing one enemy down, for sure. You really want to play this with the Trails class you hinted at earlier? Well, see, I don't know anything about the Trails classes, but... Yeah, I mean, this character is quite clearly, you know, open to synergy, you know? There's a lot of existing characters as well that would work well with him <clears throat> it's funny how the transformative level fire is just that it gets fire mm. is fire not better used somewhere else well it is if there's not a lot of fire right dion so like i like this card because it kind of serves a dual purpose you've got the hey you've been missing fire this whole time because you're the only person in your party who uses fire here's searing blaze have at it, right? But then you've also got the flip side of it saying, hey, you're in that party that's constantly making fire. So you've not, not struggled. You know, you've probably leveled super quick and f are feeling pretty damn powerful. Well, how about burning a passive effect while I had to consume that fire all the time? You know? I think it's kind of cool. Also, if you took Jack of all trades, you know, getting wound onto people is pretty easy. Get three wounds out. I mean, I know that we're going to be playing it for the top, but, you know, I think it's one of those. Um, I, yeah, Nits, I don't know, like, when I'll, well, well, we'll see. I mean, send them over to me and I'll take a look. We'll see when we'll, like, schedule that in. Um, because, well, I mean, I don't know how much information is out there on the Trails stuff. Uh, and how finalized they are. Like, I've, I've enjoyed doing the Crimson Scales ones because, for the most part, they're finished. You know, and there's been, obviously, there's just a few little changes here and there. Um... But for the most part, we've we've been dealing with finished classes, so I don't know how close they are. The stuff is finalized. Okay, well then maybe we're in a better position to look at it. Because I don't want to um you know, I don't want to like cover a class and then a couple of key cards change, which then makes something completely different. Or weak weakens a particular strategy a lot, or strengthens a particular strategy a lot. Um I mean, level five to me, this is like a slam dunk, easy searing blaze just because we've been looking for fire. But, you know, potentially this could be quite an interesting combo piece. Again, if you're going for all this strength and stuff, it's a bit of a sub theme build going on here with this kind of strengthening your allies stuff. So possibly, you know, you've got all, all of the heals as well, right? Maybe if you're playing a bit, a bit more of a hardcore support character, maybe it's better to go for hook and ladder. 
A flaming axe. Attack A, wound. If this attack kills the target, all adjacent... All enemies adjacent to the hex in which it died gain wound. Didn't we... Didn't we have this card at level 1, chat? Was this a level 1 card? Did we... We had a card like this at level 1, didn't we? I don't think there's an ability like this at level 1. Yeah. Not a fan. Uh, this top ability is not one that I will uh, ever entertain playing, unfortunately. Better than Devastating Hack. Yeah. <laughs> I guess it doesn't take a lot. Yeah, uh, just like... Even on like, you, you want to do a big attack, you want to do a lot of boss or an elite, um, it's burning a card. Sure, you can get fire out of it. So there's a bit more of an argument. A little bit like, so, you know, like Ruin More has the sated mechanic. So where, you know, you need to burn cards because you need to become sated. And then that's kind of like the whole... The whole mechanic like that character has a tempo to having to burn cards like sometimes you burn cards that are not so strong but because you get sated and then you can have a really strong follow-up turn like it's part of the mechanic of the character i mean it, i can't be convinced that i need to burn a card like this just to make fire i'm sorry it just doesn't do it for me wound contagion we're not playing it for the top well yeah good because the top is not great 23 initiative and the bottom then is move four if you end this movement on your ladder all adjacent figures suffer two damage and you gain one xp create fire lovely there it is another unconditional make fire even better make fire than the previous level because we had to attack something here this we can just move four and make fire uh, even if we discount this and we don't do anything to do with this move four make fire 23 initiative I mean, that sounds like the kind of thing our character needs, right? Um, obviously, getting some upside here with your ladder placement. I guess in an ideal world, what you would do here is you would move forward like two two hexes, place the ladder next to an enemy, walk onto it. Then obviously that enemy is going to take two damage, right? That would be the ideal way of playing this. So you should reasonably expect to be able to at least turn this into... Move four, do two damage to an enemy, create fire. I would hope. Because you can just use walls as well. So just walk up next to a wall or something. At least now you consider using hooks and ladders, searing blaze bottoms. Well, possibly. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, this bottom ability is everything we wanted, right? Everything... It's, it's better than Searing Blaze because it's it's actually just move forward, make the element. So it is actually better. Um, and to be honest, with two cards that make fire, that might be all you need from that po from this point onwards. You know, make, consume. You know, you could, for example, you know, first turn, turn one, Searing Blaze. You know, move, get your ladder out, Searing Blaze. Make your fire. Next turn, consume the fire with your top action. Make fire with your bottom action. Move your ladder. Then you got fire again. Next turn, consume the fire. You know, you've already... That's already, you know, two decent cons fire consumptions. <clears throat> mm. This is OP. Very good. It is very good. It's rumbling advance. Like with... A move four instead of a move two, right? And more damage. It's a better rumbling advance. And that's a very good card. Then Jack of All Trades. Yeah. Then Jack of All Trades. Can you grab it and not place it? Yes. Yeah, the ladder doesn't have to be on the board. No. At least I don't think so. Pretty sure. Just that you can only have...
Yeah, anytime you want. You can just only have one. <clears throat> ladder starts in your inventory. Yes, extendable ladder. Indestructible extendable ladder. Patent pending. <laughs> Alright, well, the other level 6 is going to have to be pretty special to beat this, right? Okay. Mutual aid. You and one adjacent ally may perform attack for range for. If both figures attack the same target, both figures gain strength and after the attack. I mean, it's possibly better than the top of this, but also maybe not. <clears throat> we need some indestructible ladder memes. I need to get the other memes done first. Jesus, I'm running behind on that. I need to do that. I keep saying I'll do it at the weekend, but then I get distracted with something else. <laughs> well, I'll keep trying. I need to, I definitely need to spend some time doing it. Yeah, I mean, I, this is, I'm on, I'm on the same level as, as this, really. I mean, this is better. Because in theory, you can split the attacks. So, you know, I like that. Um, move three, heal three, range two. If negative conditions are removed with this heal, the target gains strength and you gain one. Yeah, this doesn't really add up, right? I mean, again, Flaming Axe here just seems to be by far the better card. Like, both of them have a very kind of similar top ability, but this would be better. But similar top ability. Uh, but this has the by far the better bottom ability. By far the better initiative. And we've already taken a card that was a, a move and a heal, right? So... However, it does do strengthen, so you could self-strengthen a little bit. Hey, Tiger. As a digital only player, you're assuming none of this will be relevant for you? Well, if you play Tabletop Simulator, it would be. <laughs> you can play this on Tabletop Simulator. You can. Um... Yeah, I'm, I'm not, uh, I mean, I'm not sold on mutual aid. There's so much of this strength. I, I feel like this was, a, it's, it's gone a little bit like that, um, like Bright Spark for me a little bit with the strength and mechanic. The thing with Bright Spark was, was it threw so much stuff at you that it became very like kind of confusing and cloudy as to how like how much of this strength and stuff do i really care about you know like how much of this how much am i trying to strengthen allies like it, it's it's almost made the strategy seem kind of very like easy or just not very coherent because there's just so much of it on everything that i'm like well what ones do i really want like what ones are the actual good ones which ones should I play with? Which one should I not play with? You know, if every action is just going to give strength at all times, you know? Like, if every action does it, you'll lose the value of the actions that do do it over the ones that don't, right? It's... It becomes too common. And that's how I'm feeling about this whole strength and stuff. It's, to me, it just feels like it's on way too much stuff. Like so much stuff that I don't really know how to place it. I'm like, I don't, I don't understand like how much of it do I need? Do I really care about it? Is this like the best card ever for this strategy? I don't know because there's so much strength on, on everything else all the time, you know? And that was something that I struggled with with the Bright Spark as well. I just felt like the Bright Spark was just too much, too much stuff on the cards for the strategies and just... Gave you too many, too many things. Like, I I know that we don't want to print boring cards. Like, you know, I'm I'm critical of them, so it's fair. 
when I say I don't like a card that just does something that like, oh, oh yeah, great. It's a move to heal to. Great. You know, we know that's good, but there's nothing else to it. It's quite vanilla. But also, I don't necessarily feel like we should always be slapping all of this stuff on it every single card because now it makes me feel like some of the other cards are not as valuable, you know? But anyway, Flaming Axe Bottom is fantastic and we will be definitely taking that. Uh, rolling Flames. Attack three. All targeted enemies with wound suffer one damage. Create fire. Suddenly fire is everywhere. What is this about? Jeez. And all of the enemies with wound will suffer one damage. What a great way to follow up from this, huh? <laughs> Frick yeah, fire. It just feels like we went, like there was a, such a drought of fire to then be like, okay, three levels back to back, fire, fire, fire. There you go. Which I'll be honest, mm, I don't know. Is it a little bit cheap? Cheap tactic, maybe? You know, we've been waiting for fire for so long because we know it'll improve our character a lot. And then suddenly we get hit with loads of fire. Like, are we, is this character just going to have some sort of insane power spike from level five? Where it's just like, yeah, from level five onwards, the character, you know, you're just, just, it's just jokes. You know? Um, I'm a little bit concerned about that. Like, oh, every ability now makes fire. Like half of your... your your Because now we're like, what? We've gone five, six, seven. That's three. So that's three abilities that make fire that we've now got. And, you know, we play five turns. So three out of our five turns now... We can reliably have create fire on potentially that's you know now we've suddenly gone from oh my god i'm in fire poverty over here i can't get fire to save my life to oh, i play all of the best abilities in the game constantly with all of the fire you know it's like a very big sudden shift you also have the perks yeah i guess we have the perks too and we could have maybe done enhancements, possibly. Non-burn flamethrower? It kind of is, yeah. Except for the fact that it doesn't wound. You have They have to already be wounded. <laughs> but yeah, it is. Okay, so this is obviously very good. Very good combination with Searing Blaze already. So, good, good combo there. Uh, 53 initiative, terrible. Wound, target all figures adjacent to all figures with wound. Ooh, okay. Kind of like that. That's like, um, that's like some Cthulhu stuff going on right there. All figures with wound suffer one damage. Nice. Two da- Oh, this is great. Dude, I like this card a lot. Okay. Cthulhu in the house. We got like reverse Cthulhu. Well, opposite Cthulhu. Now we poison and wound everybody and we we stack Cthulhu and this guy together. And then Baneful Hex on top for extra measure. If you didn't take the loot cards and enhance fire and everything. Maybe. But what I'm saying is that it's a little bit of a... It's a bit of a cheap trick because you know to say oh here's your character you your character really likes fire okay but we're not gonna let you make fire really you're gonna have to figure that out okay cool all right that makes it more challenging you know you haven't just given me everything on a silver platter fine but then once you obviously get to like levels you know six seven eight nine you know you're starting to get up to the top power levels of the game you know, the cheap trick is just to like, oh, let's just make all of these abilities really powerful. And then they, the fire thing, I think, is kind of where I'm at with that. Like, oh, we'll just stick fire now on everything. 
you know it just feels like a little bit weird to me like it's it's a very easy way to just immediately improve the character and i and i think you should introduce one or two but uh, you know we've now wanted card number three in a row so card, okay <clears throat> it's almost like the fire was sputtering and then suddenly ignited on all of our cards Firefighters don't make the fire, they go where it already is. Yeah, well, yeah, thematically, that makes sense. So then, why are we now? Well, I mean, well, thematically, we're supposed to be like a fire. We're almost supposed to be like a fire, um, like a fire bender, if you like, right? Like, that's kind of like where we are. We're a pyromancer, but we use our powers for good. Like saving people and being part like that's kind of like what we are. An arsonist. <laughs> no. Attack five things for three plus damage if wounded sounds powerful enough to me. Exactly. So take the fire off. Like that's kind of like my point, you know? Like it's the same thing with the strengthen thing that I just said. You put that strengthen on everything. Now suddenly I'm like, I don't feel clever anymore, right? You're taking, and this is why I don't like Lightning Bolt. we after level four and level five. Because you don't feel clever anymore. Because you got to a point where you're like, okay, we need teamwork, guys. I'm going to work with you and we're going to do this together. And I need you to, you know, could you generate an element for me? Could you generate fire? Yeah, I can do that. Great, I'll... I'm going to go super early. I'm going to go here. I'm going to put my ladder here. Okay, cool. Great. Right. We got all this planned together. So you've got like a cool strategy going on with your character. You're having to engage, you know, with the whole scenario, with your teammates, with everything to make sure that everything's kind of going together and working well, smoothly. And and I like that. That's that's the game is really fun when it's a puzzle like that. When you've got different characters, do different things. You've got to work out the interlocking systems got to work out who's going to work well with that one and then if you just give a character hey we're just going to give you a bunch of cards that are powerful and just make the your game easy now like think about think about this like how many of the last three cards have we seen that have really been on the whole ally side of things right like you know we've suddenly gone from being like Oh, we're helping. We're kind of, we're having this collaborative element to being, oh, don't worry, guys, hold my beer. I'm going to nuke the entire room, right? Like, I don't know. It, to me, it's... It's why I didn't like the lightning bolt after level four and five, because she just was like, here's a good value attack card. Here's a good value attack card. Here's a great value attack card. Okay. And I think that's okay to maybe do that like, you know, like maybe seven, eight, nine is kind of okay because you're kind of like getting towards the end of the character and it's kind of fun to get really powerful towards the end of of your your leveling process. But like level five, you're like, you know, you're just over halfway through playing the character. You don't want to suddenly start getting like super powerful. I don't know. Hmm. <clears throat> like I was saying with the chieftain, it is its true self the whole time. This is now fire. Mm. Yeah, I mean it's it's a it's a really strong card. Um, the other level seven is if you are on your ladder, you may perform move three, attack three, add plus one attack for each of your allies adjacent to the target. Pretty cool. Consume fire to add plus one second advantage. Okay, so this is like an improved version of one card that we had earlier. Search and rescue. All right, I quite like this. Obviously, it's not on the same power level as this top, but... Like, in theory, I like the idea of this. Get to move your ladder around. Has that see has that theme? It's like harking back to that theme a little bit. 
Got some fire consumption there, which is pretty decent too. Better than careless charge? Yeah. I guess the only problem with this one is that the level one version of this card. Is, well, not the level one. Was it level one? No, the level one was the ally one. Was, well, pretty crazy too. The first one is to manage to let go. Yeah. And it creates the element. I like this though. Like, you know, I want more ladder shenanigans. I like ladder shenanigans, you know. I guess we did get um, some kind of decent ladder shenanigans like this. 18 initiative. That's pretty nice. Move three. Add plus one move and jump if this movement begins on your ladder. Okay. Shield two. Effect one adjacent ally. And it's the first time we've seen shield on any cards, but it's not us. Effect all adjacent allies instead. I mean, that's actually a pretty reasonable, like, little tanking card there. It's actually pretty, pretty good value. I guess it's just a shame that it's, you know, level seven and... I mean, it's probably about level seven power level, though. You know, give that to a red guard or someone like that. They're going to love you. I don't have to take rolling flames. Take search and rescue. Get rid of my pain. It's fine. Like... I like the bottom of rolling flames more than I like the top. Like... This is, that's more fun to me. Right now. Because what you do is you like... You play this first, right? So you, you go really... Like you go super late. And you go searing blaze... Make sure you're on your ladder. You searing blaze. Wound a bunch of people. Hopefully you have fire from the previous turn too. And then you go spread that wound. Because you target the guys in the middle, hopefully. Then do two damage to everyone with wound, right? That would be really cool. Like that's a fun little combo if you can kind of sync it all up right. And I think that that's better. Like the, the problem is, is that obviously the top is an incredibly strong attack as well. So, um... So we'll see. But I actually quite like just using the bottom for... I always liked playing um, Accelerated End and stuff like that on uh, Cthulhu. So this 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 is fun. I, I enjoy this. The slow drain. It's always fun to play around with. Okay, level 8. Attack 4, range 2, push 1. Backdraft. Interesting, interesting pattern there. Very interesting. It's like the upgraded version of the previous one. Like, it's double stacked. Like, that was one. And that's two. Very interesting pattern. It's basically just like the full honeycomb missing one, though. We can consume fire to get plus one attack. Create dark. Two XP. Dark, that's a new one. I mean, it's, it's far, as far as burns go, this is attack five on potentially six things. As far as burns, a burn like AOE type effects go, this is pretty good. You know, it's not obviously up there with cards like Flurry of Axes, but you, I mean, it, it could really help you clear a room very fast. I mean, this is probably the best AOE burn that I've, that I've seen, I think, that this character has so far. I mean, the annoying thing is, is, of course, you have a card like this, which kind of feels almost like it could be fairly similar in certain situations. And I guess that's the problem with these things. But attack five, and I mean, the push one seems a bit arbitrary, but sure. If you could nuke down a bunch of enemies with this, it's pretty strong. the finite version of the big one and the bigger one yeah i guess it kind of is i like it i think you know as far as one time burn effects go it's a good one move three on the bottom push two create fire target one adjacent enemy if you push the target into the hex containing your ladder target gains wound suffer two damage and one xp 
Hmm. Well, another create fire move bottom action, huh? And now we just have fire forever. I mean, we have so many abilities now that create fire. Do we actually have any abilities that consume fire anymore? <laughs> and one. Two. Three. Four. <laughs> uh. I'm joking, of course, but it's kind of funny in a way. Um, I mean, sure, it's a move three, make fire with some great value tagged on as well. So, yeah, pretty good. <clears throat> How can you not take a card called Backdraft, the greatest fire firefighter movie ever made? I didn't even know of that. That didn't even know. That was straight over my head, that one. Okay, cauterized wound. Level eight. On your next source of damage that would reduce you or an adjacent ally to less than one hit point. That figure suffers no damage instead and performs heal 10. Bless bless self oh like thematically this sounds very fitting to what this card does a little bit spicy like thematically that, that's a really cool name idea for a card. Really cool idea for an ability. But mechanically, it's very bad. It's very bad. <laughs> Why not heal one, then heal ten? Or just make it, instead of it having the heal keyword, have it like... Um, Have it like how uh, mech suits worded so that even if you're poisoned, you still gain the heal. I can't remember what it is. So instead of it being heal, be like recover some health, right? I can't remember what it is. Yeah, there's a, there's I, I can't remember exactly the way that demo suit words it. It's like increases maximum health or something. I mean, that, that card operates in a slightly different way because you can overheal. But there is a way of wording the card so that it circumvents poison. Yeah, increase, something like that. To be honest, if you get yourself into a bad situation, this could be burn a card to save three cards and, and get two blesses. Yeah, but you have to preemptively play this, right? So I have to give up a turn, or a top action at least. I have to give up half of my turn, but you know, top actions are usually... 70% of your turn a lot of the time 60 to 70% of your turn so giving up a, a large amount of your turn to play this so that then if in the future you or an adjacent and that character has to be adjacent can't be like run off somewhere else they have to be adjacent to you instead of them having to burn two cards to an attack they can heal up gain 10 then maybe, yeah, sure. If let's say that they were to heal 10 and it was all good. They were then to get attacked again a couple of times. Then they could be in the same situation of burning a card again. Like, it doesn't progress the scenario. And that's my big problem with this type of effect. A big type of effect of this is that Gloomhaven is all about managing stamina. It's all about a clock that you have that the enemy doesn't have. And a, a card like this is so passive that I just find them to be unplayable. Because, you know, I would much rather be running up to an enemy and hitting it with a burn for, like, the attack eight, right? Go and hit him for eight. Try and kill him. Let's see if I draw my times two, guys. Let's get strengthened up. 
I'll run over and I'm going to hit this guy for eight. You know, maybe I kill him, maybe I don't. But at least I'm trying to win. <laughs> I wonder how someone walks next to you and gets killed. <laughs> your hound, your best friend? Oh no. Not good. Yeah, I, I mean, unfo yeah, I say, unfortunately, it's a really nice idea for a card, and thematically, it kind of works very well. But it's mechanically, in my opinion, unplayable as an ability. Um, 13 initiative, though, I think that's the earliest initiative we've ever had. So hopefully this bottom action is good. Move two. This movement is unaffected by difficult or hazardous terrain. Okay, so easy jump onto the uh, the ladder. Add plus three attack and wound to the next attack performed by an adjacent ally this round. Not bad. It's an improvement on a previous on a previous one that we had, right? It's an improvement on a previous ability we had, I think. It says character ally. Oh yeah, it does. Okay, the summon thing can't happen. Yeah, there. It's almost as if they knew that was going to happen. <laughs> yeah, that probably that probably just said ally at one point, and it probably happened to somebody. <laughs> I'm like, okay, we need to change this card. <laughs> oh, not bad, pretty great. Yeah. Well, I mean, adding plus three attack and wound to uh, for an ally's attack is huge, right? For, for, the, for a bottom action, that's really good value. Well, that saves the card. I mean, this is 13 initiative with a useful bottom ability. And we've taken a lot of good top actions recently, right? You know, top. Well, I guess we got that for the bottom as, uh, as well. Top. It's interesting because backdraft is like kind of fun though. Getting to push something into a ladder and stuff. It's kind of cool. I mean, you can almost say that they're quite comparable in a weird way because like plus three attack and wound versus wound and two damage. I mean, and it makes fire. They're pretty similar, right? But of course, maybe this might be a bit easier to land or perhaps this won't happen very much. I don't know. Kind of interesting. Split up your levels on half the levels, take the better card and half the levels, take the funner card. Hmm. I feel like the problem that I that I kind of I've had with this character is that there's there's almost like no distinct builds at all. Like there's very like th this this character is very flexible. But it makes it very hard to kind of say okay you should go for this and that because there's no like there isn't like an obvious like, oh yeah, this is what we've been with building towards to, to make this build the best build, right? You know, if we say that there's an on ladder build and there's an off ladder build, but there isn't really, there's just ladders and ladders exist. You know, it's a ladders world and we merely just exist in it. We live in it. <laughs> you know? And then there's this kind of strengthen build going on where we kind of, strengthen our allies and we get bonuses for that and they can get bonuses and that can work really synergistically and well but that feels quite all over the place as well so i don't know it just doesn't feel particularly coherent in terms of like this is a, a good build so maybe it is best to just take whatever card at the time when you level up and just feel like that looks fun because it's not like i don't feel like there was any card at any point that we took it and we were like oh, okay well we've now kind of hindered the chance of maybe 
you know, tweaking our build later on down the line into something else or making a few changes. Like, it, it hasn't felt at any point the game has said to us, right, you're going to go with A, you're going to go with B. You take this card, you're going down this path. You take this card, you're going down this path. And, you know, you're going to be... It feels very much like it's just the whole thing is very kind of moving together and you can just flip between whatever you think at each level up is like hey that sounds more interesting that sounds different which you know i don't know if i'm 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 not sure if i'm a huge fan of and i like flexibility i do but i like flexibility like in the cards i don't like it i don't like your level up decisions to be kind of very samey if you like it also raises the question, would you want to replay the character? Because you can kind of do everything in one playthrough and really... I don't know. <clears throat> Reminds you of the Stanley Parable reassurance bucket. It does feel a bit like the Stanley Parable. You can go through that door, you can go through this door, but you're all just going to end up at the same place. <laughs> you know? I don't know. Like, there's no... Like, ladders are quite an interesting mechanic, but they're very subtle. Incredibly subtle. And because it's only there's only one mechanic, it feels like you're playing with ladders, <laughs> you know? You see two builds, kind of. You definitely can imagine replaying the character. I mean, I'm personally not seeing it. Like, there's, 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 there's different cards that I would pick with different groups, for sure. Like, there's different, like, hey, this would work really well with this character, so I'm going to pick it. But I don't think that necessarily, like, defines a build. That's more like, hey, this is just a good choice for this situation that we're currently in. You know? Much love less than three. Hey, Chaz. Straight back at you, buddy. 32 months now, my friend. Oof. It's been a long old time. Hope you're doing well, buddy. Welcome back. The quest continues, my friend. I hope you're doing awesome. Hope you're doing, um... I mean, have you started your, your engineering, um internship yet or are you still uh waiting to go mm -mm -mm -mm. yeah is that both level eights that was both level eights i i feel like I mean, the thing is, is that this, the top of this card is so bad that I feel like I just take back draft anyway. Because this is kind of got some fun going on with the ladder, right? Not yet. You start on Monday. Awesome. You got some time off now then? It's always nice if you got a bit of time off between jobs and things. Hmm. <clears throat> There's the persistent level one, the persistent level five, the support cards, etc. Yeah. Like I said, I feel like if you're playing a certain. If you're playing with a certain character, then like you would choose maybe slightly different cards. Um, I think if you're playing in a multiplayer situation, you probably want to play your game more than you want to play other people's game. That's just my personal feeling. Like, when I play a multiplayer game and I'm only controlling one character, I like that I get to control the actions of my character a bit more. You know, that I am my character and I'm the one who's doing these things and I'm getting some kind of um, some ownership over how I'm playing and how I'm doing. So I generally tend to play more of, like, the damage-dealing characters tend to lean towards taking stuff that synergizes well with me helping me be better um, rather than worrying too much about everybody else whereas if you play solo it's a uh, with more than more character it's a bit different then you're like oh 
actually, I would love to try and combine these three characters together. So, like, this is a character that would work very well solo, and you messing around with lots of different synergies than I think it would do in a multiplayer environment where, you know, potentially... Um, potentially you might be forced down like a more traditional route and you know you don't maybe get all of that ability and time and space to to experiment uh i i think i would i'll probably end up taking backdraft just because the the, the top ability of this is so bad that i can't even i don't think i could even stomach reading it <laughs> in my hands <laughs> uh <laughs> Fla flash over? Flash over. Flash over. Is that supposed to be one word? Is that a thing? That sounds like a, a, a term. Is that a term? You purposely told them a week later to give you time to get stuff done and immensely prepare for the new job. Good move. Very good move. So, summon Reigniting Drake Fiend. One health. Three move. Two attack, range two, flying. So you get a little pet dragon. The next two times this summon dies at the end of your following turn, summon it in the nearest unoccupied hex. Hey. It's got... It's got extra lives. How about that? Can't you just call it a phoenix? It kind of is a phoenix, huh? Interesting that they didn't go with phoenix. Maybe that's because there's already a phoenix in the spirit caller. Flash over is a thermally driven event during which every combustible surface exposed to thermal radiation in a compartment or enclosed space rapidly and simultaneously ignites. Flash over normally occurs when the upper portion of the compartment which is temperature of approximately 1,100 degrees Fahrenheit for ordinary combustibles. There you go. Learn something new every day. I thought it was weird that it was all one word. Like, it sounded like it was a term. The fake phoenix. Well, this is more of a phoenix than the spirit call of phoenix, I would sort of tend to say. Because I felt like that I was a bit disappointed with the phoenix in that. This feels more like a phoenix. It's ranged as well. Only range two though, which is a little bit, and one health as well means it's basically dead to just, you know, an enemy blows on it that it's dead. I think this is quite good. Like in terms of like good, but balanced good as well. Because you know what we're like with range summons. We're like, range summons, oh my god. Here we go again, right? But one health. It can die twice. It's only got range two, which is like, it's range, but it's the, like the smallest amount of range we could give it. I kind of think that's... That's maybe pretty balanced, like, for a, for a range summon. Can you consume the fire on your turn? Yes. The same way that um, flaming avatar, burning avatar works for the spell weaver. Yep. Burning avatar does the same thing. Creates fire on its attack. <clears throat> you wouldn't say it feels more like a phoenix, but it's better. It's literally rising from the ashes of its own death from fire. It's literally what it's doing. Whereas, like, the phoenix is coming from an egg. I mean, I don't know my phoenix law very well, but... This feels like the problem with the phoenix, with the spirit caller, is it spent forever just doing nothing, and then it came about, and then it disappeared again. And it didn't... This felt very... Like, the idea of phoenixes is that they keep coming back, like, quickly. Well, that's how I, like, I sort of and feel about them anyway.
So, I mean, this is this is a good way of balancing a summon. I think this is actually a pretty well balanced range summon. And also just ha having it have extra lives is makes it just more forgiving. And it's more forgiving without them having to pump the stats. It's a really good way of dealing with that problem, actually. Because, you know, if they pump the stats here, let's say if they said, okay, well, we won't, we don't want the, the two, two charges thing. Okay, let's make it range three. Let's make it attack two. Let's let's give it let's give it eight health or something. Six or eight health. Um suddenly it could just be at the back and just constantly attacking and just would maybe be a bit more of a problem. But the fact that it's only got one health, range two, but it comes back twice, it's a very clever way of doing it. Making it strong. But risky, if it dies, the player doesn't get completely hosed. But it might not stay around for the whole scenario. Not a given. <laughs> but you can enhance the health. <laughs> okay. Uh, 96 initiative. So that's our latest initiative as well. Uh, move four. This movement is unaffected by difficult and hazardous terrain. Add plus one move and jump if this movement begins on your ladder. All adjacent figures suffer two damage. Add wound. That's a. It's, it's very similar to something that we've had before, but the, the wound I think is new there. Um, I mean, it we it's a variation of an ability we've seen a few times, so not really too much to talk about there. It's it's good, very good. <laughs> no, that's a lot of damage. But it's not really, you know. Setting the world on fire, if you will. <clears throat> Is it a mix of two cards? No, I think there was another card that had like... It was like rumbling advance if we ended on our uh, ladder. I think the wound is wo the wound was maybe new. Um, so the other level nine is Incident Commander. One ally within range three may perform all of the following abilities in any order. Attack three, move three, heal three self. I mean, that's pretty cool. I mean, that's one way to make a heal card good, huh? <laughs> <It's a joke. sighs> it never gets old. Um... Super good little mix of abilities there. Combos really nicely with some other cards. I kind of wish this ability was a bit earlier, though. I kind of wish this wasn't level 9. I kind of feel like this would have been really cool at, like, level 7 or something. Void Warden gives attack 3 at level 1. Yeah, yeah. It is maybe, yeah, maybe when you compare it to like and the bottom of her level five as well, right? It says ally, can you abuse the artificer's rocket? Sure, that would be an ally of you, yep. It would indeed. This needs to be a plus one to all of those to feel like a level nine card. Mm. That's why I think I would prefer it a bit of a lower uh, at a lower level. I think I would have preferred it. I don't think you necessarily need to make it, you know, like just buff all the numbers to make it level nine. I just, I just feel like it feels like it would have been a cool ability to get like six or seven. It would have been a bit more. It would have given maybe a little bit more of a, a different build decision, you know? A bit of a different take at some point. <clears throat> um, right. Strengthen on the bomb. Affect one ally within range three. Okay. Add plus two to the value of that alloy's first attack. 
move and heal abilities before this round. Okay. Strengthen one ally within range three. Add plus two value. Hmm. I'll tell you what I'm a little bit surprised at. They were always very careful on this character to always just say, you know, add plus whatever to the first attack, you know, or to one attack or to a single target attack. You know what I mean? They were very, very careful with this character to not leave some kind of like, oh, get plus one on your entire attack action type ability up. And would that have been too bad to do here at level nine? Would it have been so bad if this said add plus one to the value of the allies all attacks next round, move and heals, right? Would that have been that bad? For a level nine? I don't think so. <clears throat> Mind Thief doing Empathetic Assault plus an attack. Move 4 heal, 4 self attack, 7 stun. Yeah. I mean, yeah, sure, but I don't know. It just feels like at level 9 we can do better than that, right? It says attack abilities. It says, it just says first. Uh, true. True. So it is better then. No, I was thinking. Sorry. You're right. I just saw this and first attack, and I just sort of filled in the blanks a little bit there from what the previous ones were like. So I guess if you are doing like Inferno, you would get plus two to everything. Well, then that's very good. That's probably more like, yeah, okay, now we're talking level nine. Rate yourself on a scale of one to ten for designer ship. What is in my personal designer ship? Probably like one, because I've never designed a class. <laughs> like, you know. <laughs> it says first attack abilities in case they do two. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, that's, that's better. It is better. That's much better. Because I was thinking like, oh, that seems quite weak for a level nine ability. But yeah, sure. Okay. So that, that will give them a nice big buff. Really good combo potential. Level 9. I don't know. A bit disappointed by level 9, if I'm honest. I don't know what I was expecting. Like, the thing is with this character, I almost felt... I felt like we kind of lost momentum in terms of, like, cool and interesting things. Around level 6 and 7, really. I mean... Maybe that's me being a bit harsh, but I, I don't know. I just I didn't I just didn't feel like we really like like the the kind of the ladder stuff was still there. But I was really surprised we didn't see like oh a passive ability that says you can have two ladders. I mean, not that that would be really crazy useful, but it would be kind of fun. It's kind of surprising that we didn't see something like that. Go back on level 9 and take all of the cards from 2 to 5 then. Well, it's not like it's... It was more to do with the fact that... I didn't... I mean, the cards were powerful and good. But, you know, it just didn't feel like the character really evolved much in, in any way. Like, we didn't get, like, something that was, like... I don't know, some kind of... Build topper. Like I said, I felt like this character just is a... It, for me, just felt a little bit... It has felt a little bit too... Um, like I think that the core mechanics of are are interesting, 
but ultimately fairly weak in terms of like how they're implemented and how they how they affect the game compared to maybe other characters that we've seen like where you come across like another character like the spirit caller who has an incredibly strong mechanic like in terms of identity and theme like i create spirits and they're summons but they're not summons they're different they work in a completely different way and here's all the cool things you can do with them and there's lots of room in that mechanic to come up with like oh there's another little different one here here's a different twist on it here here's something here whereas this character felt like it was in initially was quite interesting like okay this is affecting the the board and there's definitely something interesting going on here but as you level up it becomes very apparent that like the mechanic just kind of like it just is like you know the depth has kind of been explored and there's nothing left in it you know the only thing they could have done was to you give you another ladder or completely add some way that ladders would could work in a different way like there wasn't any you know because they yeah it just it just felt like it was fairly shallow in terms of like what you could explore and although it, it was very it was interesting to begin with and i think you can have a lot of fun playing this character for like exploring it and coming up with cool synergies along the way i just felt like once we got towards the later levels there just wasn't anything really like to keep me super interesting, interested to play the character much more. Um, and certainly the level nines, although I think that they're like decent, and I think they're, you know, balanced and pretty well designed. I don't feel like that really changed anything. Like there's nothing here that I'd be like, oh yeah, I really need to play to level nine, you know? Two lives wouldn't fix it. You haven't heard the two rungs don't make it right. <laughs> Uh, guess we end on a sour note well it's not about ending on a sour note right not at all like creating a class is hard it's not easy so i respect everybody who manages to get a class to anywhere closest like this is very very playable obviously been play tested has a cool mechanic you know they've worked on it really hard you know there's some people are probably going to like this class a lot more than me and you know i respect everybody who has the who has the ability to do that and the vision to actually come up with it and, and do it all the way because it is hard it's not easy to do you know every, lots of people have ideas for characters you know i've had ideas for the characters before but i've never actually made one you know the amount of play testing and time commitment you have to put into it it's hard and you know this was a unique mechanic and it actually interacted with stuff that was already there, which was a really good start. Because, you know, ladders interact with the world in a different way than anything else has ever done before. So that makes it interesting, because not only does is your character then kind of interesting, because you've got this mechanic, but also it's making the whole scenario interesting for your buddies too. Because suddenly you've got a ladder you can put on the battlefield that changes, like a trap is no longer a trap. You know, hazardous terrain is no longer hazardous, you know? It interacts with the whole scenario, which can change things, which is really interesting. But what I was thinking is it just lost steam because the depth of that mechanic would have been really fun for a good number of levels when you first start out. But then for me, I just feel like it would run out of steam because you would you'd kind of go, okay, right, I, you know, I know how it works now. We're used to playing with it. What's next? And it never really kicked into like, you know, top, top gear where like there was something else after it that was like, oh, now I'm playing the game on another level again. You know, like there's like, for example, what if there was a special token in the box with a ladder that took up two hexes rather than one and the ladder had to start on one of the hexes that came up with it, right? What if suddenly at level five, you got an ability, a card that was a burn that says you now have your your ladder is now considered to be two hexes rather than one suddenly all of your positioning abilities change again you know you now can make a bridge across you know two lots of hazardous terrain for your allies to walk across you now can push your enemies into the ladder much easier you can now locate yourself on the lower rung of a ladder and an enemy could you could then have the ranged ability not be disadvantaged because you needed to be on the ladder 
but also were next to the enemy because the enemy was next to the ladder. Do you know what I mean? You had lots of ranged attacks that were like, if you're on the ladder, it's ranged. But you would have this advantage still because your ladder is only one hex. But if you suddenly had a two hex ladder, things could change again. Do you know what I mean? Like there was nothing like at level five or six that I was like, oh, wow. Like that's made me thought about this whole character in a different light again. Like, no, it just kind of like just kind of went along, right? Um, and, you know, there's only a certain amount of depth that you can do, you know, if you introduce stuff like that, it's more components, it's more rules, it's, you know, it makes things difficult, you'd have to, you know, FAQ a bunch of stuff, probably, you know, it adds complexity where maybe you don't want to add complexity, so, you know, there's pluses and minuses for things, you know, not every idea can make it in. <clears throat> Yeah, Shane, you kind of agree with me there. Opportunity for a ladder extension theme for double ladder. Yeah. <clears throat> and like thematically, that would make a lot of sense, right? That you have a ladder that can now go across two hexes. Like that's like nobody's going to be like, oh, no. Very good, Sabatodo. <laughs> oh dear. Never trust ladders that up to something. You guys are on form tonight. Mostly lateral moves. Mm. <laughs> hey, deck. Popping in to say hi, one of these cards. So this is the Fire Knight, which is a Crimson Scales character. So it's a community, um, it's a fan-made character that um, is in a kind of community spin-off expansion for Gloomhaven. So there's a print and play of it. There's a tabletop simulator mod for it. And there was a physical edition of the game made, but essentially they're qu quite um, high quality, kind of play tested by the community fan curated content for Gloomhaven. So they did like, I think it's like 17 new classes or something, 16 new classes. And then there's Trail of Ashes as well. The milestone cards were revealed. Maybe we'll look at his milestone card. Because maybe that might change things. Um, did you say they're on Reddit? Are they on the Gloomhaven Reddit? leave now if you don't want to see it yeah i mean it is kind of i guess technically a bit of a spoiler is it in here somewhere Oh, thank you, 125. All right, here we go. Right, so I only want to look at the fire that one, really. Okay, so improvised methods. So this is the milestone card. I don't know what you have to do to unlock this because I believe they're different for each character, but... Basically, it's an extra ability card you can unlock after you've played the game for some time. I believe when we were looking at Chain Guard, it was about three or four scenarios you'd have to play to do it. I'm not sure if that's pretty common, like that amount of playtime or not. But it will be a card that potentially you can get, I imagine, fairly early on. Instead of, you know, it's not considered to be like a level nine card, like power level wise. Like it's supposed to be a card you get, I think, reasonably early in your progression. So, um... 
Push two. Target one adjacent ally. That ally suffers one damage. That pushed ally may perform attack full model. Okay. That's not bad. Kind of like it. Although, although they are going to be not adjacent to you. So like for some of the buffs and stuff, that isn't going to really work. Like in terms of you have to push them. I guess you could decline the push, right? And then they would just suffer one damage and then they could still do the attack four. I don't know. Maybe you have to, you have to push in order to get the attack. I don't think so, but... It just say the pushed ally. I mean, if you decline the push. No, I, I, th I, don't th I think you could probably decline the push, but you'd still have to take the one damage. Shove them over there. Yeah. Um, the bottom move two. You may place your ladder within two hexes. There it is. Literally, we were talking about it. <laughs> oh. Oh, within two hexes. Not. It is two hexes. Hang on. Oh, ladder. I don't know the ladder's hex. What? Move two. You may place your ladder within two hexes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, it, it, all right. So, it's kind of like what we were talking about, but it's not quite. Because it's like for a round. So you may place your ladder within two hexes. When they say within two hexes. They don't mean. They don't mean range two right. Like within two hexes. That means bridging two hexes. Or does that mean range two. Throw the ladder. Like, you may place your ladder within two hexes. As in, it can occupy... It doesn't... I don't think it does occupy two hexes, which was what I was kind of, like, hoping for, an ability that did that kind of thing. Just that you may place it within two. So, range two. Right? That's how... Wait, I mean, it's just... It's just weird why they use the word within. Rather than use, like, you may place your ladder at range two. Like, which would have been such of a simple way to... To kind of template the card. I don't know. It's just... It's throwing me a little bit that they're using the word within... You read it as range two as the next sentences say hex, not hexes. That's a good point, Tom. All allies enter that as hex. Yeah, not hexes. Good point. Just a bit strange that like they use the word within when they could have just put you may place your ladder at range two. Just I don't know quite sure why it was worded that way. <clears throat> The finite milestone is place your ladder and end your turn on it 10 times. Then you'll unlock this card on the website. Oh, that's really easy to do then. I should get that super quick then. So all allies that enter the ladder's hex may add range 3 to their melee attacks or gain advantage on their ranged attacks. So that's like super... I mean... That could break the game, right? that break the game? I mean, it sounds kind of almost very screwy.
Because I'm just trying to think of like what's like a melee attack that you could if you could change it to a range three. Yeah, AoE melee turned range. Yeah, exactly. But then a lot of the ones that I've thought about, they specify a range. And I believe that it doesn't really work. Like, for example, Unstable Upheaval specifies range, I believe. It's a melee attack, but it specifies a range. So I don't think, like, adding range 3 would then make Unstable Upheaval. Because it's like, you may attack everything adjacent, or then it's within range 2 or something. And then it would be adding range 3. This is this is like gonna cause some weird FA rules FAQ problems for sure. Inferno. Well, Inferno is a melee attack, right? But you wouldn't want to increase the range because it would have no effect. Because the range is the room. <laughs> so adding three range to it or changing to range three wouldn't really make a difference. Yeah, unstable upheaval range five. That's where my head was at. But I don't know if that's correct. You know, you're also thinking about stuff like... Burn Away the Dark. Is Burn Away the Dark now a range 5? <laughs> Hi, Ice Wayne. When's the next Jaws the Lion playthrough episode coming? I apologize. I've been really, really slack at uploading those. Mainly because I got stuck on one scenario for about three weeks. So I just stopped uploading them. I will try and get something up by... It will probably be by Monday now, to be honest. But I, I, soon. I intend to. What I need to do is I need to kind of go back and I need to actually like edit some of the episodes kind of together and splice them a bit because, yeah, I spent about three weeks on one scenario. And I was almost tempted to do a dedicated video about that scenario and just my general experiences of that scenario. <laughs> Scoundrel, big adjacency. Yeah, so um, long con. But then that specifically targets all adjacent. But I think I think adjacency is considered to be like range one, right? Because I, I we, there's 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 a pr thing with the drifter, which I remember having a discussion with Gripe about. Because there's a the drifter has the same problem. So the drifter has a card that changes melee into ranged and i said well how does that work because melee attacks don't have a range and i so how do you when it says adds range to a melee attack how does that work because a melee attack doesn't have range so it would be you know it would be considered to be nothing um but apparently all melee attacks are considered to be range one like it's unwritten like they don't write it on the card but by the rules all melee attacks are considered to be range one so with the drifter when he had his ad range it was one plus whatever the ad range was so this would be range four so like a simple melee attack here you know on somebody would a single target would now be a range four melee attack because you are adding range three right because it's like a weird one where you haven't had that kind of thing quite before does this change it to a ranged attack no I'm not saying that very confidently, <laughs> but I think no. <laughs> but like there, there's a there's specifically a card with the drifter, and I remember having a conversation with Gripe about it because I was like, I don't understand how this works because like 
like if you it, it specifically i think if we if you go to my drifter video where i talk about the cards and go down into the comment section i'm pretty sure there's a thread about this thing because i'm pretty sure me and gripe were speaking in the comments of my youtube video <clears throat> you think it would only be good on multi-target attacks that have multiple hexes such as devil horns yeah yeah that's that would absolutely be the best use yeah 100 percent. but like so then for example devil horns right it's like the three hex pattern in front of you does that then change that to be a range three but obviously it keeps the same pattern <clears throat> you wonder if this card didn't take the inherent range one of melee into effect it means your melee attack abilities now has range three possibly like i said i the drifter was the first time that i really came into this problem and uh, you know and gripe was like says basically it's inferred that every melee attack is considered to be range one it is kind of inferred within the rules and i think they clear it up in the faq somewhere at some point in the frosthaven faq or in the rules section of that but he said yes essentially what it is is that it's every melee attack is considered to be range one but we don't write range on the card because of course then people would think it's a ranged attack but it's not it's a melee attack but by its very nature because you have to be adjacent it is range one does that make sense like it doesn't say range anywhere on it because otherwise people will go oh it's a ranged attack but it's always at disadvantage so they never put range on it but it is inferred that it is considered to have a range value of one for the purposes of increasing range values. It's 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 a weird it's a weird one. <clears throat> it's like how Saw has melee heals, but they actually place the range one on those. Yes, because like it doesn't really it doesn't really matter for heals, right? But because of the whole uh, disadvantage and the way that the range is templated um, and the way that the rules have always said, you know, for example, clear the way, you know, the way that the certain cards are ruled in certain ways, they can't put range one on cards like that. <clears throat> it's still good as advantage, though. Yeah, I mean, just getting advantage on their range attacks is also really good. Yeah, Flurry of Axes. Free advantage without having to use the goggles. I mean, you're probably going to use the goggles, though, but, you know. <laughs> I think the placing the ladder within two hexes is actually probably the real power level here because that allows you to do all of those pushes onto the ladder so much easier. So those abilities, we were like, well, you know, having to push an enemy into the ladder like how practical is that going to be we're going to have to use an ability to like move around the enemy to place the ladder behind them and then we have to move back and then we have to push them like now that won't be a problem you just you know you're just in melee range of an enemy right next to them you just place it behind them and then you just immediately push them onto them like it's easy like so it really enables those abilities much more so it makes um like um where are you there was another one here wasn't it so it makes this really easy to do right um obviously not on the same turn but you know in future turns and there was isn't there a top attack back at like level five or something this one level three like ladder assault so like now like going for ladder assault i think is probably the way because if you can get the milestone card i think you absolutely want um that and also one of the reasons why we were thinking about this was the low initiative and that gives you another what was it 16 that gives you a 16 initiative so you know you don't have that kind of problem so i i think if you would if the milestone card is in your game and you can get it and you're playing with it i think now the pick probably at level three is more clearly ladder assault. I think that makes a lot more sense now. 
because you've all you you basically you should by level three have your milestone because it says like 10 times move on place uh move place your ladder and move on to it in the same turn or whatever 10 times i mean you could do that in like two scenarios you could just focus really hard on it so there we have it there is the valraf fire Knight. a kind of interesting theme for a character here it was interesting that the designer just kind of wanted to basically make a sort of fireman type character and uh, it was sort of their job and that they wanted to bring that into it i think that's probably the first time any character has had some kind of actual kind of relevance in the real world if you like and then brought across i know that a lot of people have a bit of a thematic disconnect with this character and i will say that i think it is a bit more obvious maybe than other characters i think obviously uh having this kind of character and this kind of occupation in the world of gloomhaven does kind of make sense like it, it works in theory however i think uh, maybe in terms of like practical theme of what like an exciting character might be maybe it's not so exciting i mean you know it's an exciting profession in our life and our boring kind of world but in the world of gloomhaven you know maybe not so much but i do feel the character was quite unique and uh, perhaps not one of my favorites in terms of the mechanics that it kind of ended up being but i don't think it's a bad character by any means clearly a lot of love has been poured into it and it's been kept very much on point and on theme for what they wanted to and the ladder mechanic is actually pretty interesting quite unique actually in the way that it kind of works and is put together so yeah, i think a lot of people will actually kind of jive with this character and will enjoy it and and the theme perhaps for you that seems perfect and you actually you really like it so yeah definitely one that i think some people will will like and will probably want to check out and play a big thank you once again to all of my supporters over on Patreon and the subs over on Twitch. I really appreciate it. And especially Mike Kira for the legendary support and truck driving gamer as well. Thank you guys. That's really, really kind of you both. If you would like to hang out with me live and with the community live, come over to twitch.tv slash request every Monday, Wednesday and Sunday, where I'm usually playing Gloomhaven or always talking about Gloomhaven or Frosthaven as well nowadays. So that's crept in because not long now. And uh, yeah, have a good time. So just come hang out if you like. Okay, all that's left for me to say is, again, thank you all so much for watching. I will catch you in the next video. Bye. Well, I think so. Yeah. Oh, 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 That's the first thing from That's the blessing so, from... Uh, uh, Isaac, at this point, can we uh, get your approval to add an additional attack modifier deck uh, for allies in the digital version? <laughs>